Hey guys, happy snow day wherever you are. I don't want nobody else to ever love me. You are my shining star, my guiding light, my love fantasy. There's not a minute, hour, day, or night that I Hey, Foxy, how are you? Hey Tina, how are you? Good to see you. Good to be back on Friday. Hanging in there, great to hear, Foxy. Y'all dealing with the snow as well? We got snow here. I am, I am better. I am better. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what some things I want to do, but my focus has been on the exam I got tomorrow. But the problem is with the snow, I got to check and see if we're even going to have this exam tomorrow. So, But I have been good. It's snowing hard. and uh, Yeah, I know. I reached up and spoke to uh, family and friends up there. Um, I heard it's snowing uh, much harder than it is down here in Delaware. We're only expecting three to five inches. But down here, they shut everything down if it's hard rain. So there's no school, no nothing. I will definitely keep you lifted in prayer. I got you, Tina. And it's great to see you as well. I'm glad you're here. And again, thank you to everybody that's here. If this is your first time seeing me, joining me, whatever, I am Keith K.L. Belvin, crisis specialist, author, educator, and every Friday, I try to every Friday, I know I missed last Friday, we try to have a conversation that helps build up relationships, personal development. And just an honest and safe conversation as well as this is a safe space. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are talking about how personal expectations can turn a relationship toxic. I'm going to give you 10 ways that can happen so we can have that conversation. And this is going to be an 80s type of day, so if you're not digging 80s music, this might not be the spot for you today. It's going to be an old head type of day. It's a snow day, everybody's relaxing, so it's going to be an old head type of day. Not that I'm disrespecting none of my young folks, I appreciate you and love you, but it's going to be an 80s type of day. So if you go, why are you playing that music by grandparents? Well, I might be as old as your grandparents. <laughs> you can't go wrong with Luther. Come on now. Wanna stop. And while we're waiting for other folks to stop in, share with me how your week has been going, or last two weeks, since it's been two weeks since I've been on. And again, in the in the, the chat is uh, my moderator, Tina, the moderator, Tina, who's on, and she'll be guarding the, 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 the chat. So if you get out of pocket, she'll get you. And if she don't get you, yes, it is a big chain for a big guy. Do you get a seat at the trauma conference? I'll need you to... See. Did you get a seat? No, I didn't get any information. You can always send it to my inbox. Not good, but pulling through. Okay, Tina, I got you. DJ Amar. So again, I want to thank everybody for being here. And also, if you have not, you can check out my latest book, which is 12 Steps to Recovering from a Toxic Relationship. No, I didn't get, um, I don't know if you sent, I didn't get, if you sent it by email, I didn't get it. If not, you can send it to the inbox and I'll respond or you can send it to my email. We're good. Um, just go to my link in my bio. My emails are there. Love the oldest young man. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Send my child. Okay. Got you. Take your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be an 80s type of day. So no, no knock on my young folks, but it's going to be an 80s type of day. But yeah, my latest book. Um... 12 Steps to Recover from a Toxic Relationship is, again, an opportunity to um, discuss how to recover from toxic relationships. So I have a background as well as I have a master's degree in education, a master's degree in human service counseling. So I come to the table with receipts. So the goal is to try to help. I'm also a professional counselor. And so I work with people on a regular basis on how to fix the things that's wrong. And... When I'm on on Friday, this is actually what I'm trying to do is offer information, entertainment, and some education because I did spend some time in the classroom. And let me just give you some very basic rules, and those are simple. One, this is a safe and respectful place. If you come in disrespectful, you got to go. We don't entertain trolls here. And when you ask questions, that's fine. The, the floor is open to ask questions. 
try to keep the questions towards what we're talking about so we don't go off on tangents. The box will not be open, so we're not doing that unless I have somebody that's coming on. What is my take on marriage? It is a wonderful thing. I am happily married, and I think when you find somebody that you really connect with, I think marriage is a, is a fantastic thing to be a part of if you've done the, the, the background work necessary for you two to really engage with each other. So I think marriage is fantastic, and I, I'm a fan of marriage. And so, and that's it. All my information is in the bio. So if you're interested in the information, if you're interested in counseling, if you're interested in purchasing any of my books, this is number six or seven. Plus, I've been a part of a bunch of anthologies and I've been featured in some magazines. But more importantly, I'm here to offer something to you today. And like I said, so today's conversation is on how personal expectations, um, the background work. Yes, the background work is important. I think the problem, Foxy, with a lot of people with marriage is they're moving too quickly into marriage before they've really had a chance to get to know each other or to date long enough to really get a feel or to get married for the proper reasons or the right reasons. And what are those reasons? That you have a great understanding that you two better each other, that you two need to be with each other, want to be with each other, and you two are willing to do the work necessary to make a marriage what it's going to be. Are marriages always going to be on highs and lows? Yes. Are they always going to be low? No. Are they always going to be high? No. But you, you figure it out. I learned that after failing my first marriage. So I am happily divorced and happily remarried because I matured from the mistakes I've made from my previous marriage to allow me to be a better husband in the second one. And that is called growth. And the hope is that when we make mistakes, we learn from them. The other thing is, right over here, you see the hearts going up on the screen. I ask you when you're here to tap the screen. We have a goal of 20,000 plus likes. And the reason why is because then TikTok will take this live and position it so other people can see it. Also, and I'm going to let you in on something, is I have ADD. The hearts actually lock my eyes in or give me something to focus in and it keeps me centered. Because I will tend to drift. That's why the music's on. It's to kind of keep me from floating all over the place. So parents, when they want you to start giving your children medication for ADD or if they say ADHD, if need be, but get a second opinion and have a conversation. Not all so-called disorders are tragic problems, but they just have to be worked. And I, my 23 plus years, 25 years in the classroom and in the last five or six years running an after school program, Children are more gifted than we give them credit for, but often things we don't understand, we want to medicate. And I'm not adverse medication. I am really not. Medication is needed. But I think we have to see something for what it is first before we just start dumping medication into a child, as well as ourselves. Nothing wrong with medication. Just know why you're taking it and know how it's going to assist you. Medication can't be the lead. It can be the assist of what you're doing. You still got to do the work. So again, I appreciate you all being here. And like I said, if you have not picked up your copy, please do. I am getting good reviews and I've heard some good things. And I use the book in my counseling sessions. So I have a couple of clients who are actually using the book and I'm seeing good results from them. And that warms my heart. That lets me know that I created something. What is the role of a man and the role of a woman in marriage? Depends on the individual. Depends on a couple. There is no blanket role. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I'm seeing on social media is people want to paint everybody's relationship the same way. Your role is whatever you and your significant other decided is going to be and works for you. Don't let everybody else convince you what a man or what a woman should do. Forget that. Throw that out the window. What works for you and your, your person? What works for you and your man? What works for you and your woman? And whatever that is, make sure there's something that both of you understand, both of you under respect, and both of you are benefiting from. And that's the role that both should have. I'm seeing way too much foolishness online of everybody trying to dictate what someone's role should be. How do you know what my experiences are? How do you know what my wife's experiences are? So to tell us what our roles should be when you don't know our situation makes no sense. But what should happen is it should be understood and agreed upon and worked at. You do that, you're going to have a wonderful relationship. And one of the reasons why I know that, I did not write a book called From Gigolo to Jesus and not put out there what my life was like before. And when I tell you I know what it's like to be out here and be a whole lot of things that's negative, 
and what that transition looked like. And that's my beautiful wife, by the way. Um, what that looks like, I do. So I don't just talk to be talking. I talk with the opportunity to educate, to entertain, and to inform. And writing a book called From Jiggle to Jesus, put my memoir out there, was because I had to show people how I transitioned from being a misogynistic whore to being a loving husband. That's just my path. And if my path helps you find your way, so be it. But my path is not the path. And people have to understand that. Hey, what's going on, DJ? Good to see you. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that I see online, too, is everybody yelling and screaming as if they know the answers. You can't know the answers about someone's life without doing any type of assessment. And two, you have an opportunity to talk with somebody and understand what their path has been or where they currently are. You can't tell them exactly what they need to do because you may be doing more damage than good. And the one thing that I live by as a professional counselor, if I think I'm going to harm you, I take myself out of the mix. Because rule number one, do no harm. If I can't help, then I get out the way and I try to find you somebody else who can help you. And that's the thing that I'm noticing is that folks are taking way too much information in from folks who don't have a background, a, a, a diverse background in what they're saying. They're talking about their personal experiences, which is their right. And it is their understanding. But there's a reason why folks go to school. There's a reason why folks do training. There's a fo reason why folks get certifications because there's guidelines and ethics that are needed so you don't do more damage and then walk away from somebody and leave them in shambles. And now they're worse off than they ever were before they spoke to you. But again, enough about me. What about you guys? Let's go in the chat. If this is your first time here, tell me where you're checking in from. I'd love to know where you're checking in from. Share where you are in the country and let me know if it's a snow day where you are. As I said, I am Keith K.L. Belvin. I am here in Delaware, originally from New York, and it is snowing, so everything is shut down. Like I said, any little bit of snow down here, they shut everything down. In New York, I had to teach in three, four inches, five and six inches of snow, sometimes almost a foot. They didn't care. They kept schools open in New York. So again, where you're from, check in. If this is your first time here, let me know and let me know where you're checking in from. And tell me how your last two weeks has been. It's been two weeks since I've been on. And I do miss when I get the, when I don't get the chance to come on live. I don't come on live during the week. It's just my thing. I'm actually trying to figure out a way to uh, New Jersey. Okay. I lived in New Jersey at one point. South Jersey. Salem County. Graduated from Penns Grove High School. When I got kicked out of New York when I was 16 on my way to jail. So they sent me to live with family in, uh, in South Jersey. I graduated. Yeah, I, 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 I have a life. <laughs> I was that dude. Hey, good morning from Fort Worth, Texas. Great to see you. Thank you to have you here. And that is uh, Eunice. Let's see, Eunice. And if I have that wrong, I apologize. Vegas. Okay, DJ. We don't get so here often. Yeah, I know. When I was in uh, Palm Springs in 03, we were about three, or was that four hours on the other side of the desert from Vegas? And we were going to drive, but it was something about driving across the desert didn't sit well with me. Gloucester County, I know exactly where Gloucester County is. Yes, I used to live in Salem County. Played for the Pensgrove Red Devils, 84-85. Graduated, went right back to New York. But again, I want to thank you all for being here. And remember, keep tapping that screen. We're going to go to 20K likes, 20K or more. Keep tapping that screen. And that's all you got to do and then hang out. Get your notebooks out. All you got to do is take notes. I'll do the work. Malone, Florida. Okay, cool. I've never heard of Malone. All right, I'll take that. Good to see you, Joyce. I have some family and friends in Florida. I need to get down there. But eh, traveling has been... I want to go to Florida, but this whole political thing, I ain't going to lie, has me a little... Ugh. I also lived in Queens. That's it. Now we talk. I'm from South Jamaica, Queens, Eon. Huh? 40 Projects. Grew up in Rochdale and lived on Sutton Boulevard. And then my wife and I are from Brooklyn. So that's where I did all of my teaching in Brooklyn and um, one year up in Harlem. But the rest was in Brooklyn. Great to have another Queens. And I'm glad they caught the person that was stabbing people in South Jamaica. I was a little nervous. I had to call some family and friends and tell them to be careful. And then I found that they caught the guy. He, Some guy was just randomly stabbing five people. Just crazy. So, you know, you live in the hood. This is what you deal with. So, again, I want to thank all of you for being here. Huntsville, Alabama. Let's go, Lady P. Snowed in in Huntsville. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. And again, keep tapping the screen, guys. 
So again, I want to know where you're at if you're snowed in. I don't get excited by snow days because then it's the idea that I got to go out there and shovel and brush all that stuff off. So I wait till it's done, and especially when you got arthritic knees. If they'd have told me playing basketball and football years ago I'd have this pain, I still would have played. It's just a matter of getting older. But thank God for KT tape and knee braces. If you know, you know. But today we're talking about 10 ways personal expectations can turn relationships toxic. Now, all of us have expectations of something. The question becomes, when does our personal expectations create a toxic situation in our relationships? And I'm going to go over 10 ways that that happens, okay? And I'm hoping that if you see something that resonates with you, fine. Also, let me say this, and I got to make sure I start saying this before I get into the subject area. Let me just turn this down a little bit because this is the professional part, right? If anything that I'm talking about, if anything that I'm discussing in any live that I am on triggers you and makes you feel somewhat negative, right? Log off. Just log off. And the reason why is I don't want you to feel bad about something that I'm saying and I'm not there to help. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you've been through. If something that I'm talking about hits on something that hurts, I don't want you triggered and taking that into your regular life, into your family life, into your work life, whatever it is. I'd rather you log off. You don't even have to tell me. If you want to reach out to me later and just say, hey, Keith, I was enjoying it, but I left. It's understandable because the end of the day, this is information to hopefully shed light on some things. I can't go super deep into it because it's not a counseling session. But if something that I say, whether it's this live or any future live, triggers you to the negative, just go ahead and log off. I'm not worried about numbers. I'm worried about how you feel. And that's important. So don't stay and try, because I've had a couple people reach out and say, I had to get off because when you started talking about children or, or the husband or the wife, I get it. I get it because many of us have a lot of things that we have not dealt with. And a lot of us are hurting in ways that we don't know that we're hurting until we're triggered. Then it's time to go, and it's okay. You can reach out to me later, or the replays of all of my shows go over on my YouTube channel, and you can go watch it when you're in a better state of mind, and all my information is in my bio. So I just wanted to say that before we get started, because again, I am not here to hurt in any way, okay? And it's nice to have you here, too. Um, it's, okay, you know what? You gave me a name before, and I and it's been a while, so I, I, I apologize, it's, uh, Ismail. And you gave it to me before, and I apologize. And I hate when I forget names. But again, keep tabbing the screen. We're going to get ready to get started. Okay, so enough of me rambling on. So you guys ready? If you guys are ready, but again, no one shared with me how their week was. Come on, how your last two weeks been? Rumani, there we go. Rumania, there we go. I remember you told me that. And I was like, because I remember the picture, actually. Gotcha, Rumania. So how's your last two weeks? T rough. Okay. Tyra, what made it rough? And hopefully it'll get better. Always remember there is a balance to everything. Nothing stays bad forever. Nothing stays great forever. You ride it out the best that you can. Peace and blessings, Minister Allen. That's the key. The key is to try to stay in that middle point the best you can. Life is a continuum. It swings back and forth. Sometimes it's going to swing to the negative. Sometimes it's going to drop. You want to try to stay as, as middle as possible, as close to the, the best that you can. And when the, 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 the negatives come, emotional roller coaster, I got you, Foxy. Hang in there. Unbelievable and stressed. Okay. You might want to journal some things, Jen, just to set it down and just see what made it unbelievable and then tackle it in smaller bits. Instead of just, because sometimes it can come at you in waves, chop it up. Chop it up and knock down smaller pieces of it until it's big enough for you to deal with all together. But that's how it is if it's starting to come at you in waves. So thank you for sharing that. And Foxy, same thing. Hold on. Just like a roller coaster, you hang on. There's going to be some highs. There's going to be some lows. But eventually you're going to come back to a what they call a neutral place. Hey, what's going on there, Timeless? Um, and that's another thing, too. That's called homeostasis, by the way. Homeostasis is the body's way of, of regulating itself and coming back into a position of, of neutrality. So no matter how high and low you get, if you give your body a chance, it will come back to a position of neutrality. Give yourself a chance. Sometimes we dig the hole and we keep digging even though the situation has already happened. So we're hurting ourselves over something that's actually already done. 
but not knowing what it is, I don't want to go too much into detail, but that's what you do. Try to stay in that middle. Hang in that middle and enjoy the highs when they come. Try to try to, to cut the low, the lows down as big as possible. Still working out though. Of course, I know you're not gonna stop, Foxy. <laughs> I know you're not gonna miss the gym. Love that. And again, appreciate you. Tell me how your last two weeks have been, or if this is your first time here, tell me what your last week has been like. And again, I appreciate you being here. And again, tap the screen. We're going to go for 20K likes. We normally get over 20, and we'll probably be close to 30, if not 40, by the time we're done. I got time today. I do have a counsel, one counseling session today. Um, person called me and wanted to have a session today. I don't think the snow was sitting well with them. So I was going to take the day off, but I did. I, I hate to turn away anybody. So I do have a counseling session later on, but that's not till later on this afternoon. That won't affect my time on today. So I am here to have this conversation. I got the 80s music playing today. It's an old head type of snow Friday. So to all my younger folks in here, you're like, what type of music is he playing? This is your grandma, grandpa, and old head music. This is the music that matched my little gray beard here right now. It's been good cold though. I hate the cold, man. I do. I love it when it's warm because it's easier to cool off than it is to warm up. I hate the snow. I hate the cold. And if I could, I'd move to Jamaica, Montego Bay. Yeah. Get me a nice house with good internet on the beach, and I am good. Way back jam. See, that, that you made that sound real old, user. Way back? It's not that old. <laughs> Ghana have not been, and it's on my list of places to go. It is on my list of places to go. Even thought about relocating. Shaka was a... Uh, Shaka still is one of those voices. And attractive, too. Ooh, that's a whole... That's another lie for another day. My infatuation with full-figured singers. Can you put the talk about it again? Sure. It's, uh... We're talking 10 ways that personal expectations can turn relationships toxic. That's what we're talking about today. Ten ways personal expectations can turn a relationship toxic. I think it's all real music. I don't want to. I don't want to knock the, the the young folks' music because I I listen to that too, and it's all good music. It's just that a lot of negative or some less talented music has made its way into the the the, 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 the bloodstream. But there's some great singers out there right now as well. Being an introvert and snowed in, been a wonderful, <laughs> I feel you, Lady P. I feel you, introvert's dream, right? To just, hey, I'm good, as long as you got the internet, something to eat, and, and you're warm, you're good to go. All right, I love it, I love it. A few more, a few more about what everybody's been doing and, and what's going on with you, where you're at, or if you're new, where you're checking in from, and then we're gonna get started. I do love, I love reading what you guys are into and what's going on, I do love that. That's what I miss when I don't get the chance to be here on Friday. And shout out to Tina. Let me tell you something. Tina's a fantastic moderator. She she checks and makes sure everything is good. And so uh, shout out to Tina. I'm so glad she asked to be the moderator. And shout out to Ellie, who was my original moderator, but her work schedule changed. But the door is always open when she has a day off to come. But I am so glad Tina stepped up and asked because she helped me out because she allows me to do a lot. That would be very difficult if I had to man the chat and do this as well. So shout out to Tina. You give a person their flowers when they're here. <laughs> God is good. Started off a rough start of 2024. Lost a job, but God is faithful. I'm working again. Amen. Let's go, Trina. And, and you know what? Yes, God is good. And we have to take the negative to push through. And there's, there's always things waiting for us. And that's kind of what last week I needed to take some time off just to reevaluate some things that I got to do. And there's some big choices I got to make over the next month or so that's going to make some changes and I got to be prepared for it and that's kind of what I'm doing right now so I'm glad you shared that snow on the east coast trapped in the house thanks to the music vibe. no problem user I'm here on the east coast with you here in Delaware we don't have as much snow but down here if the rain gets too heavy they shut down the school so I was able to get my after school program in last night I didn't get a chance to post the video um, watching the young guys play basketball and that's something too let me tell you something I was in the gym I, watching the guys my staff was doing incredible with them and I was just watching how these are elementary school kids but I'm so used to urban city kids having a certain flair that seeing my kids here I was like come on guys we gotta we gotta get off those video games man because I did not like what I see but this is why I'm here 
We have plenty of snow in Chicago. I feel you, Joy. And I realize that instead of criticizing children, which I do not, I look at the situations that they're in, whether it's lack of fathers or whatever situation, and I try to offer what I can. The mothers are fantastic. They they love what we present in the program. I have one male staff, one female staff, and myself. So a lot of the young men, this is their opportunity to interact with, with men because um, they may not have them at home. And the, the young men who have, and I have my young ladies on Tuesday, same thing. I see why that's necessary. And that's going to be another live for another day is why both parents are necessary. I'm not going to talk about that today. But that interaction with the opposite sex and that interaction with the, the same sex is necessary because there's a, a certain level of development that is needed from interacting with both uh, genders, uh, especially in a program that's designed to help with the social emotional. That's what I do. The frustrating part is that it's not flashy. So people don't support it or get behind it like they should. And every person out here running any type of after school program, the hardest thing is funding. And that's where schools are, are struggling, trying to find the money to bring programs in like mine. And mine is a small program and we keep it small because I wanna be able to deal directly with the children in a way that helps them socially and emotionally. Um, and this is what we're working on, but that's something different. You'll see the videos, it's called Young Kings, Young Queens. And this is what we do, it's a mentor program where we deal with the social piece, we feed them, um, we give them an uh, uh, opportunity to work on um, the physical. So we work on all the aspects to try to deal with the kid in, in all the different ways. So, like I said, but that's something separate. All right. So if you guys are ready, and again, I appreciate all the responses. Let's rock out today. So if you guys are ready to get into this list of personal expectations and how they turn relationships into toxicity, let's put ones in it. You know what? Let's say I'm ready. If you're ready to go and you're ready to get this list, put I'm ready in the chat. And follow Tina's lead. She'll always show you which number that we're on as we go through the list. But put I'm ready in the chat. Not to dip oh, tech sent a special. I sent you a special gift via email, Mr. Key, to say thank. Oh, okay. Oh, appreciate that. I'll definitely check it out. And I, listen, sometimes the prayers is all I need, but I appreciate it. You guys are ready. That's what I'm talking about. I appreciate it. And again, if, if anybody want to talk, all my information is in my bio. You can always hit me up in the inbox. I'm always down to listen to see ways that I can help the kids, as well as the adults that I work with. I see that everybody's ready. Joy is ready. Eunice is ready. Lady P is ready. DJ is ready. Fox is ready. JT is ready. Jen is ready. And, of course, Tina's leading the way. She's ready. So let's go with number one. Turn this down just a little bit. So on my list of ten ways that personal expectations can turn a relationship toxic, number one is unrealistic demands. That is number one. And Tina will put it in the chat if, if you miss it. All right. Good morning, Nina. Unrealistic demands. Okay. Expecting a partner to meet impossible high standards can create a constant sense of failure and disappointment, leading to resentment and toxic atmosphere. Now, this is very important, and I put that as number one when I was putting this list together because often the expectations that we have for a partner are unrealistic and a person winds up beating themselves to death to try to become what you see when it is not realistic. So you want them to become a superhero when you know that's not possible. And again, if this hits home with something or this makes you feel uncomfortable, as I said, you do not have to stay, but we got to have the conversation. And this is a big one because in my counseling sessions, I will hear people say she was supposed to and he was supposed to. And I go, how? Why? And often we can't even explain why we chose the expectation that we had. So we literally created a situation that was impossible to have and then blame the person that we chose to bring into our life. Why couldn't you be that? And again, if I step on toes, I'm sorry. And many of us don't want to be honest about that. And so in my counseling sessions, the only way I can help you is to be truthful. But when you have a partner, you cannot have expectations of your partner that does not make any sense. Okay? Now, let me ask a question. How many of you 
just put me in the chat. Don't out yourself too much. How many of you have been in relationships where you put unrealistic demands on the partner that you were with? Let's do that first. I'm going to ask the second question. Change. Oh, change always begins with self. The only way change can happen. How many of you put me in the chat if you have been the person with unrealistic demands that you've placed on somebody else? At least once in your relationship. Put me in the chat. Put me in the chat if you have, at times, placed unrealistic demands on somebody that you were with. Nobody? Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Domo. I was like, I'm nobody? Hmm. Thank you, Tina. I was wondering what was going on. I was like, nah, my, my chat normally. Thank you. Go ahead. You Okay. I was about to say, I was like, they holding back on me? Okay. You don't have to out yourself and tell me what it was or why it was. I just want, the reason why I asked that question is I want each of us to see that we're not alone and that we're connected. Now, here's the bigger question. And I'm going to get a whole lot of response on this one. How many of us have dealt with people who put unrealistic expectations on us, on you? How many people put unrealistic demands? Not sure, but may have. I got you, Jen. Now, here's a better question. How many of you have had partners who put way unrealistic demands on you? Wanted you to be something that you just could not be. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> True said me. Joy said me. Jen said yes. Tina said me. Domo said me. Eunice said me. There you go. And it's important that we recognize that. Because here's the offset of that, guys. Often we'll blame ourselves. Hey, okay, Takora. Thank you. Appreciate you stopping by. Hope that you'll come and check us out again on a Friday. Thank you for passing through. But um, it's important because here's the here's the negative with that. That's what actually creates self-doubt. When we start punishing ourselves for not being what somebody wanted us to be, or we start to really question deeper, why wasn't I able to be that? And if we don't catch ourselves, we literally could be digging a hole and climbing into it because of what somebody else expected from us. So that's why I started with that one is unrealistic demands. Because I put, oh no, we should, and we all should. We all should demand a certain amount of whatever from ourselves and whatever um, area that we're in. I have demands on myself when I'm bowling. I have demands on myself as a counselor. I have demands on myself as a father, husband, as an author. Demands on self, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't go overboard with it and you don't grant yourself grace, which I talk about in my book. You also have to balance that off, as we talked about earlier on the continuum. You also have to grant yourself grace when you are unable to meet your own expectations. And you also should offer somebody else grace when they're unable to reach your, your expectations of them. And this is what this is. Everything that I'm offering is a way to promote healing. Okay, y'all ready for number two? Thank you, Joy. Y'all ready for number two? If y'all are ready for number two, let's get about, we got 27 people here. Let's see if we can get 15 twos following Tina's lead in the chat. Let's get 15 twos in the chat, and we're going to continue on the list as we rock out with the music. It's an 80s type of feel today. And if y'all have never heard some of these songs... You have to ask how old you are. The way that I feel. I can tell you where I was when some of these songs were playing. <laughs> hey, you don't write a book for a call from Jiggle to Jesus and don't have something to offer. I was out there. <laughs> Come down. Yeah, no doubt. You don't write a book call from Jiggle to Jesus if you don't have an actual story. Yeah. I was that dude. And I praise the Lord that he was to save me from myself. And yes, I did apologize. Hey, she I actually apologized for my ridiculous behavior for 37 years. This is when you had extended break beats. I used to hang out with DJs too. And those extended break beats, you'd be on the dance floor sweating it out, just working it out. If you know, you know. <laughs> All right, number two, guys. On the 10 ways personal expectations can turn a relationship toxic. The lack of flexibility. Ooh. Lack of flexibility. 
the lack of flexibility. This is another way when you are just not flexible, the lack of flexibility. Rigid expectations about how a relationship should look, how a partner should behave can stifle the natural growth and evolution of the relationship leading to frustration and conflict. When you are not flexible, when you don't want to give an inch, that's just how I am. She knew that. He knew that. Before he started dating me. Woo! Yeah. Sound familiar? I'm not saying it's you. I'm just saying. How many of you have dated somebody who wasn't flexible? Put me in the chat. And where the hearts at? Y'all better stop playing. Tap the screen, guys. Come on now. How many of you have dated somebody who was not flexible? Who was super rigid? Lady P said me. Come on, put me in the chat. Oh, man, me. And this is a male or female thing. This is not a gender thing here. I have counseled both men and women who were just not. They should have. They knew what I. And I'm like, whoa, sister. Whoa, brother. Hold on. Hold on. Well, you got to get to trust first, user. I don't disagree, but we got to get there first. Trust is not automatic. We start off trusting, but true trust, the built-in connecting trust, comes from a, a deeper understanding and, a, and a, a connection that comes from time spent and understanding of each other. We all have a natural um, base level trust, which can be very fragile, by the way. But yes, flexibility. Keep it with the list. I don't want to get sidetracked. Now, bigger question for all of you. How many of you have been, and if you really want to go far with it, currently are somebody who struggles with being flexible in relationships? And I'm not asking why you are not flexible. That is something that is supposed to be for counseling. But are you or have you been the person who struggled with flexibility? Put me in the chat. This is a safe space here. Nobody judges anybody here. Nobody's going to be disrespectful. If they do, they got to go. So you can be comfortable with sharing. Also, I forgot to mention, my webinar on toxic relationships is going to be the 18th, February 18th, from 2 o'clock to 3.30, hour and a half. It's only $24.99 if you decide you want to come hang out with me for an hour and a half, where we can get into some different, a deeper, a little deeper conversation in toxic relationships. Me, because I'm dating multiple. Nothing wrong with that, Tina. But... Again, the key is, remember, less flexible now than before. I got you. And that's the key is that your flexibility should change as your experience changes. When we're younger, we tend to be real flexible with anything. Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. It is as we are hurt or as we are pleased that our flexibility changes. Let me say that again. It is as we are hurt and as we are pleased, our flexibility changes. If we are getting pleased from the things that we are doing and the people that we are dating, we tend to lock in on some things. So we're not as flexible with trying new things. If we have been hurt, then we're not as flexible because by being flexible, if that caused us to be hurt, we're not quick to want to go back down those blocks. So all the time, lack of flexibility is not always a negative. Sometimes we're not flexible because it's just, okay, example, some people will only eat certain foods at certain restaurants. And when you go, hey, you should try, nope, this is what I like, this is what I'm ordering, leave me alone. And I'm not mad at that. And if that's them, let them rock. And of course, we go, you shouldn't be so close-minded. You should try it. And you're right, too. Two things can be right at the same time. Two things can be wrong at the same time. It all depends on the situation, and it all depends on the person. And we have to be careful that we are not trying to force our point of view on people who have an idea of what works for them without giving them reason. And that is the danger that I'm seeing on social media. People telling other people what they should be, what they should do, what something is, what it better be, with no context. No context, no assistance, and no assessment. How can you tell me what's right for my wife and I, and you have not sat and spoke with me or her? 
based on your own experiences, you can tell me what works for you. But until you have an understanding of who I am, what relationship I'm in, then how can I trust what you are offering? And that's why folks should keep it general, which is what I try to do on a Friday. So I don't go too deep into things because it wouldn't be professional. Well, I feel that way anyway. But I appreciate that, guys. You guys ready for number three? No, let me show him. Woo! 82. That 81, that 80, 80, 81, 82 year when this... Never mind, I'm showing my age. Go. Go. Is that a number three user? And it just came out as go? <laughs> Put a number three up if you are ready for... <laughs> Thank you for us to move on. I appreciate you guys. Keep it going. Let's get a couple more. Let me get about five more threes. And don't somebody put five threes. Don't try to jump to the head of the class. Everybody's got to put up their own three. Or back in school, everybody got to put up their own chair before we close out. I got you. Appreciate you guys. I see the threes. Number three on the list of ten ways that personal expectations can turn a relationship toxic. Over dependence on your partner. On the partner. Over dependence on the partner. Over dependence on the partner. Over dependence on the partner. And that is when you're expecting a partner to fulfill all emotional, social, and personal needs. Um, and this can place an unfair burden on them and can lead to codependency, which is a hallmark of toxic relationships. Many of us have and currently do will lean on our partners for everything. Expect them to be everything. Want them to do everything. And we will use our previous pain, our previous negative relationships, our fears, our mistrust, our whatevers, to keep that person locked into position. Well, you risk becoming dependent on that person or your happiness being connected to that person. Let me say this to everybody that's here on this chat, all 22 people. Your happiness is not dictated by someone else. Your happiness is dictated by you and another person can assist you to remain happy. They don't make you happy. You make you happy because of you interacting with somebody else and that person assists you in remaining happy. Please take that in and, and take a minute with that. Somebody else does not make you happy. They assist you in your happiness. You have to first know what makes you happy and be able to experience that. Happiness starts inwardly first and then outwardly so other folks can join in with you, assist you, or to build you up. M2 May. Good afternoon, Shell. How are you doing, Shelly? Good to have you here. But yes, number three, over dependence on your partner. And we don't ever want to become completely dependent on anyone. Because then if we lose them, if the Lord says, I want them to come home now. Some people roll, fall, roll into a shell that they can't get out of because they put all their eggs in somebody's basket. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't connect directly into with your partner. But you should still have some autonomy, some independence about yourself that your partner wants you to have and fosters that with you and the two of you grow from that. Yes, healing from a narcissist relationship, getting ready to completely attach. I got you, Racine, but those caps, though, you came in here yelling. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> Good afternoon to you, but I get you. Healing causes that type of excitement. So welcome here, Racine. I appreciate you. Like I said, guys, maturity and growth comes from... No, it's okay. I am great. The pain that we feel from negative situations, the happiness that we feel should trigger growth, should trigger some type of maturity. Once you've been happy... You shouldn't want to go back to being unhappy, of course. And if you've been unhappy, well, then your motivation and goal should be to put that behind you so you can go and become happy. So you want to invite people in to the happy you. 
Absolutely right. My dad told me that years ago, and no, I understand that statement. Okay, got you. And yeah, and, and, and what it is, is that when we share, like my wife and I share a fantastic partnership, but we had to grow from an individual positioning to a mutual, a, a, mutra, a, a mutual one. I don't know why I can't speak all of a sudden. And the mutuality is where the two of us understand that we're stronger together, but we don't lose our individual positioning in terms of who we are. But we know that the marriage comes first. And we both contribute to the marriage from our own positioning, but she doesn't stop being who she is. And I don't stop being who I am. There's just things that we have shaped our marriage into so it flows between us it's a bond and that's why and for my my church folks that's why when the lord said to become one well you have to want it to be that way not to my non-spiritual folks in any union you want the two of you to be stronger together because you have a a, a connected focus and that connected focus should drive the love to a higher level which should drive the happiness to a higher level, which then gives you opportunity on how to fix the lows when they come. And I hope that makes sense to you because it's important. And so this is what the process of this list is, is because it's again, with, with focus on ourselves, very knowledgeable information. Thanks for, no, no, thank you for being here. I need somebody to talk to. Or I'd be rocking back and forth talking to myself. So thank all of you for being here to allow me to talk. I appreciate it. Like I said, I look forward to being here on Friday. Okay, so as we continue, and again, as I said before, and I'll say it again, I am Keith K.L. Belvin, crisis specialist, counselor, private counselor, author, educator, husband, father, author of seven, six books, six or seven books, the latest one, 12 Steps to Recovering from a Toxic Relationship. Young lady here on TikTok actually said, Keith, I wish you had a book that helps somebody after getting out of a relationship, so I created it. That's what receipts look like. When somebody says, I need help, and you go out and create the help. I've been a part of nine or ten other anthologies, and I've been featured in Ebony Magazine, too. If you look right over my shoulder, right back there, but I have the magazine right over there. That's Ebony Magazine. So I come to the table. I'm not here just talking. Y'all know the magazine. I've showed you this before. Y'all have seen this, right? Okay. So have I dealt with toxic relationships? Hell, I've been in them. Have been in them, have created them, have healed from them, and have even wrote about them, Racine. See? Love doesn't hurt. I've had my share of messed up relationships because I was in a messed up place. And what you know, it's all in my um, bio. All my links is on my bio. All my professional links, my websites, my press kit, everything is in my bio. Everything about me you can find in my bio. Just click the link, my link tree link, and you'll see a whole list of everything that's going on. So racing to your question, yes. Because I've created toxic relationships. I was toxic for 37 years. Because for 37 years, it was about me. The last 18, let's see, 19, it's been about my service to God and changing my life to help people. And as a professional counselor, my focus is to help destroy toxic relationships because I know the damage that it does to children. I know the damage it does to individuals. And I know what it does to society. So my way of giving back for the 37 years of living like a whore and a misogynistic whore at that is to try to help as many people as possible. My target audience is women between the ages of 40 and 70 because those were my target audiences when I was out here doing whatever. My secondary audience is men that are connected to those women to be able to help show men how to get their way through that. But I'm also an educator. My, my information is in my bio. Just look on in my bio. You'll see where it says uh, free discovery call. Just click out, just click on the link and you fill out a what's name with me um, discovery session. You have a free session with me. First session is always free because I, I don't know if I'm the person that can help you. So there's no reason to charge you for that. And yes, I'm an author and I've written six or seven books. So I do this for real. But the goal is still to help. Okay? So as we continue. And again, I'm here. If you got questions, ask them. I'm here for you. Because again, this is why this is a safe space. Why does society promote toxicity? Because it's exciting. It's the reason why people slow down when there's an accident user. They want to see, they really, in their mind, they don't want to see somebody hurt, but they feel compelled to. It's called rubbernecking. Everybody now wants to see what's going on. 
drama creates attention. And unfortunately, social media amps up that drama to dopamine levels never seen before on this planet. So we now literally have social media addictions where people are struggling to put their phones down, even in times of crisis. People are coming on social media and you can see it. You see people crying into a phone instead of getting help. And the sad part is here I am offering help, but people will not reach out for professional help, but they'll turn to their social media fans. And I have no problem with that, but that can't be the main way of getting help. It is a way to get things started. It's not going to change because social media is getting faster. See, I'm an old head, so I can remember when dial up. Yeah, dial up. Raise your hand if you know what dial-up was. But I remember when dial-up took so long that a lot of this just wasn't present. But because I've been present and I've been on social media since 1994, when it was Netscape and AOL, come on now, Netscape, AOL, and all of that, Yahoo Messenger, MSN Messenger, whatever it was. Well, I have been around for all of that because I started teaching in 1994. And I have seen with the effects on children, but now it's worse with adults because of the speed. Like right now, we're talking from all over the world like this. You couldn't do this years ago. So there's a lot of folks who don't know how to handle this with their children because they don't know how to handle this. And I'm going to tell you why they don't know how to handle this. I'm in counseling sessions with them. What it is creating is an opportunity for people to lie and to create great lies because you can be whoever you want to be on this screen. And then you meet a person, you two sit and lie to each other, and then y'all get together and have sex, and now you're in a bad place. Because you never really dealt with the things that was hurting you. And then you find groups and pockets and lives every day where people are having the same stupid conversations, but nobody's offering healing. But they're on for hours talking about foolishness. Well, what do you think that does to your ears? What do you think that does to your eyes? And what do you think it does to your brain? What happens when you reach out and they turn on you? Okay, you cut them loose and keep it moving. Because if a person don't want what you want, okay. Like, I don't push myself on anybody. I don't tell anybody they have to get with me. They don't. Cool. And if somebody pops in here now and goes, I don't like what you're talking about. Okay, cool. Tina will get to him first or I'll get to him and we escort him out. Because at the end of the day, healing moves slower than drama. Drama will always move at Mach 1. Healing is a slow thing. Healing is what's going on under the band-aid. The cut happened instantly. The damage happened instantly. The healing takes time. And I have to, I, I preach to myself to be patient. I preach to myself, don't get upset about what you're seeing because then this is where my spiritual positioning comes in. Lord, forgive me for they, knew, they do not know. And not only does those words make more sense to me now, it actually is what helps ground me. Because God has a way of showing you things at the time that you need it. So you may have read that years ago, but your maturity had to catch up to what God had wrote. That's what's happening with me now. Now my prayers change. I ask for time. Lord, grant me enough time to reach people. If I have enough time, I can reach a lot of people. I know I'm not going to reach them all, and I'm okay with that, but I'll reach who I can. That's what we have to do. Okay, enough of me preaching. Let's get back to the list. Y'all ready for number four? Let's go, Tina. If you're ready for number four, put four in the chat. And again, I am Keith K.L. Bevel. While you guys are putting your fours in the chat, let's go with, let's see if we can get 15 more fours. All right, in the chat. And again, I am Keith K.L. Belvin, crisis specialist. And every Friday from 11.30 to 1, 1.30, depending on how the conversation is going, I am here to try to offer some type of assistance. This is what I do. And this is what I do professionally. So I do this for a living. I don't work for anybody. I work for myself because I don't need anybody telling me how I'm going to do what I do. So that's why I go hard as I do. It's also why I'm patient, too, because sometimes I get frustrated. Trust me, you get frustrated when you see people sometimes look like they're being rewarded for foolishness. All right, number four, back to the music here. Number four on the list of 10 ways personal expectations can turn relationship toxic is not recognizing individuality. Not recognizing individuality. This is an inter interesting one here. Not recognizing individuality. Number four, Lisa, Lisa, and Colt Jam. Let's go. Expecting a partner 
to always share your interests, opinions, and values can infringe on their individuality and personal freedoms, leading to a lack of respect and understanding in the relationship. How don't you feel that way? You're my lady. You're my man. You're supposed to think like I think. You're supposed to feel like I feel. How you going? Learn. Woo, Lord. You can just feel the toxic energy surging. You take away a person's individuality, you have made them into a drone. And that drone, lack of emotion and everything else, you have stripped that person of a need to want to be with you. A want to be with you. And now they're looking at the door going, how can I get away from this crazy mother? <laughs> so again, number four, not recognizing individuality. So I'm going to ask you again, how many of you have at times projected your personal feelings onto your partner and wanted them to think and feel like you do? Be honest with me. How many of you have done that? Learning institutions, church media as well, causes the masses to have a false sense of entitlement. Yeah, and their interactions with each other, fun guys. Not just the institutions. It's our interactions with each other as well. We find circles that will foster our foolishness. You see it right here on social media. You will see people form one group and instinctively an alternative group will form and they will literally yell back and forth with each other with no growth going on between them. And people will come in and get sucked into the vortex of each group. And if you stay long enough, you get judged by the group that you're close to even if you're not part of the group we see it on social media and we see it at work we see it in our lives so sometimes the best position is no position this is why you do not see me in anybody's live that often and when i pop in it is to give something and i'm gone as soon as it starts to become toxic or as soon as it starts to turn into foolishness i am gone because if i come on it is always to give some information or to assist most of our behaviors learn be all of our behaviors learn behavior. We come out as blank slates. We have a natural nature to ourselves out of the womb. But we come out, our behaviors are shaped by what we're influenced by. That's why your first behaviors are by whoever raised you. Then it is the environment that you live in. And then it is the things that you are exposed to. And as that changes or as that builds, so do you. You're listening to and all you got to do is pay attention to it right here on social media and you will see it. You will pop into some groups, you'll see it in the, in the caption. All men are, all women are, should women be this, should men be this, can a man do this, can a woman do this? And the people who are for it will come in and the people who are opposite will come in. And now you have made the person hosting the live a god with a little g. You will do what I want you to do or I'm deleting you. What? You don't feel the way I feel? You gotta go. So the question becomes, why are you tuning in? Why are you triggered? And TikTok knows that. So it rewards you pennies on the penny to do that. I come on once a week. If I can't do it in once in, in, on a Friday, I leave it alone until the following Friday. I post because I have to do it professionally. And trust me, I struggle with that too. I struggle with shutting all this down. And let me tell you, I'm this close. I ain't gonna lie to you because I, I can't. There's no reason to. I am very close to shutting down everything. And the last couple of months, I've gotten more aggravated. <laughs> I've gotten more aggravated and I really... I'm sitting back and, and refocusing on what is it that I really want while I'm on social media. Because I don't like what I see. I can't leave you, Tina. I got you, love. Yeah, that's my mother's name, so it's, you're going to make it very hard for me. But real talk, I, I can't lie to you. Yes, and I have done that before. Uh, back when I was on... Um, um, what was the original live one? Whatever the the Twitter one, I was on that, and um, I just decided I was I was done. And a lady had reached out to me on Facebook, and she said, "Hey, where where are you at? What happened? You stopped coming? I see. I just shut it all down. When I used to go live like every day, 
And I just realized that going live puts me in proximity to folks that I don't really want their energy. And it creates an issue for me because I try to avoid negative energy as often as possible. I want to do a social media. Oh, yeah, I do it all the time. I, I do. I'll take a week off, um, especially when I'm on vacation. Um, and you have to take a fast. And remember, guys, let me just say this before I, I get into um, back to the list a second. Anything that you're spending a, a ton of time on, right? It is in your best mental is what you think, emotional, where you feel, interest, to take a step back and say, why am I doing this? Some of us are on autopilot and not even realizing that we're on autopilot. We get up in the morning, before we even say, thank you, Lord, for waking up, we pick up our phones. I'm guilty of that sometimes, too. But you also have to challenge yourself. Why am I on this so much? Who Have I made money if that's what you're after? Have I made new friends if that's what you're after? Have I met people I can date if that's what you're after? But has it been successful? And if it hasn't been successful, then that's something to consider. Do I really need to do this? And then here's the hardest part. Being honest with yourself. All right? So, as I just mentioned in number four, if your expectations of a person that they must share your interests and your opinions and your values, you could literally push a person into a position of disliking you when they started off liking you. Now, we don't always have to agree, but if there are non-negotiables that you have, so be it. Then cut that person loose and move on to the next person. But you can't want a person to, ex to feel exactly as you feel just because you want them to. How many of you in the chat had to let somebody go because they just did not see you as an individual? Put in the chat. Put me in the chat. If you had to let somebody go because no matter how much you tried to explain to them, they couldn't see you for you. They could only see you the way they wanted you. Or they only saw you when they wanted to see you. That's connected to that too. And we have to understand is that if we lose our individuality, guys... We lose what makes us precious. A relationship is only as strong as both parts. Both parts. Because it is the combination of both parts that make the union stronger. It's what allows you to become something that people see and gravitate to, but they're not sure why. And the reason why it is your uniqueness. I got to know the person and was not pleased. I got you. I definitely understand, Tina. And that's another reason why we should have extended dating periods, guys. Date longer before you become exclusive. Hold out a little bit before you get into your adult-like behaviors. I'm not telling you. I know you got needs. We all got needs. But unless you're putting it on the table that, hey, this is just a need opportunity, then date longer. If you're just trying to get yours because you need it and you're adults, I get it, then put it on the table. Say, hey, 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 I'm just trying to get some. I don't really like you like that, but you look like you got some things that I could work with. Okay? Be honest. Because if you're really trying to date to be committed, then you want to sit down and go, I really need to get to know you. I want you to get to know me because I'm not here to play games. So it's all individual. My needs are not more important than what I... There you go. Come on now. But for some, Tina, the needs are real. <laughs> I know because I've seen it in my counseling session, men and women, like, oh, I just want to, I know, but is that worth it? And I ask that question. I don't stop adults from being adults. I just want you to think before you make the decision. If you've been on a two year, three year, eight year, 10 year hiatus, you don't want to come, you don't want to come back off of that hiatus to, 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 to bad juju or bad. <laughs> You don't want to do that. It's like fasting and then getting a bad meal. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to do that. So if you're on a hiatus, if you've taken a break for a while, you really want to make sure you lay down the foundation right. So if you're going to get it, you're going to get what you want and at least have some fun. You do. <laughs> I actually had that in the council set. I took seven years off of that. You didn't take long enough to figure out what it was. I know, and I'm mad at myself. I'm like, I don't know how to help you with that. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than coming off a of fast. And... 
If you don't get up out of my house. <laughs> you know what? I, call me an Uber. I got to go. <laughs> and don't call me. <laughs> Did I have fun? I don't even want to answer that question. <laughs> Whether you had fun. I didn't. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> and everybody know that face. <laughs> That's how you know you, you didn't hit the mark. No, no communication, no passion, no affection. They not trying to hug you. <laughs> so you said you got to go to work in the morning? <laughs> uh, so you said you were going home? <laughs> and the worst, if they're finding your clothes for you, <laughs> if there's no reveling in the act, <laughs> you messed up. <laughs> if they are up looking for your clothes for you, just just take them, get dressed, go. <laughs> don't even try to kiss them at the door. Just don't even say we'll talk. Just say take care. <laughs> Trust me, they're calling to talk about you. <laughs> and that's not a male or female thing. That is both. Because fellas do the same thing, bro. Bro. Let me tell you what just happened. Sis, let me tell you what just happened or what didn't happen. Anyway. <laughs> so again, guys, you don't want to lose that individuality. You want the person to be an individual because believe it or not, that's the spice. Their differences to yours could open the door to you to things that you never even thought about experiencing. And you don't want to take that away. You want to meld that into who you are. And that is why the dating leads to potential exclusivity because you find something that you want to hold on to because of that person's individuality and your individuality. And when you meld those two together, the, the fire from that makes you want more of that. KL? KL? Oh, okay, I was wondering who's at the door. So that's why you don't want to lose the individuality. That's the spice. The fact that y'all are different, the fact that the person is somebody different, and as you learn them and they learn you, you don't want them to lose that. You, you, Y'all want to be able to bounce that off, and it opens up the door to so much fun that y'all can have together because now y'all could look for new experiences together because you've shared both of your own individual experiences. That opens up the door to a whole new type of, of situation with each other as well. You don't want to lose that. I wonder who's at the door with my dog barking so much like that. So, all right. So let's go on to number five. And again, we're talking about the 10 ways personal expectations can turn a relationship toxic. All right. So you guys in the chat, follow Tina's lead. Let's get, we got 24 people. Let's just if we can get 25. Let's go. Everybody put a five up if you're watching, if you're if you happen to be at work, if whatever. Let's put fives in the chat. Come on. Thank you, niece. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, Foxy. Come on now. And don't get in trouble at work. If you happen to be at work, don't get in trouble listening to me. I can't hire you right now. I'm getting there. I'm growing my program. We're gonna see. Like you emphasize, critical thinking impaired to face and arbitrary and conspiracy. Okay, yes, I got you. Got you, got you, got you. Keep it going. Here we go. I see you, Jen. Fun guy didn't give us no five, though. <laughs> Shaquita got you. I would like to move to Delaware. Listen, Delaware, let me tell you something. Laid back, no taxes. Um, it's country, though. So let me just say that now. And you're also going to give up a lot. Like where I live, I live in the south of Delaware. It's the low and slow. Up north, there's more restaurants and anything else and everything like that. And I just don't travel up north as much. So I just got to That's why I do so much cooking. Because I'm like, I just can't find the type of food that I want. So I cook it myself. And it's I'm in the country, which is fine. Listen, I spent my whole life in the city. I, I had to learn to get comfortable with the country. So I, I Delaware is definitely um, on the map. And it's growing. And it's still a great place if you're looking to get property. So if you're looking to buy a house and property, Delaware is definitely... There's only um, still less than a million people here. I think we just reached a million a year or two ago, so there's only about a million people here. Listen, there was like 12 million people in Queens and 12 million or 13 million in Brooklyn where I came from. I want the country vibe. Yeah, that was that was us. I got tired of the city, so it's time to go. All right, number five. 
Hold on to your hats, because this is where it normally starts the gender wars. Constant criticism and comparison. Constant criticism and comparison. The number five way that personal expectations can turn a relationship toxic. Constant criticism and comparison. Stop criticizing your partner and comparing them to somebody else or an ex. You want to destroy your relationship? Criticize them often and Lord, compare them to somebody else. You have you have just poured straight poison into your relationship. Now, hold on. Let me read it the right way as I put it together. Holding a partner to unrealistic expectations often leads to constant criticism and comparison with others which can erode self-esteem and create a negative relationship environment. I feel you, Tina. You have to be careful. In our unhappiness, when we are unhappy or we're frustrated, we tend to criticize. And who do we criticize? The closest person to us, our partner. And then we compare. Sometimes we'll compare them to other people. We'll compare our relationship to other relationships. We'll compare the things we see on television. And we don't realize that what we're doing is we're slowly pouring water on sand. And the sand is dissolving. And eventually the person goes, why am I with them? Why am I with her? Why am I with him? I'm done. And that is what opens up the door to infidelity. The person searching for what they do not have at home. Infidelity is not always about sex. It is about lack of. People will choose to go out and get what they are suffering from not having at home. Now, sex is the thing that people are going to go out and do. But often, it's the search for what is being stripped away from them in the relationship. I was married for 30 years, and he was not... Living up to what I was used to. Got you. And this is where counseling is critical. This is where getting a third party to help reorganize things, to reorganize the focus, to get you guys to go, wait, put the brakes on. One of the questions that I ask all couples and married couples when I am in my counseling sessions is, do you guys feel this relationship is fixable? Hey, Benny, happy new year. You know, I always wish you Happy New Year. Happy Friday. I'm so used to have. I asked that question. Do you think this relationship is salv salvageable? Really? And if they tell me they're not sure, that's where we got to start the work. Because you got to want to fix this relationship if you if, if we're going to do something. Mr. Keith, actually, I'm not that acquainted with TikTok functionality or operation. What do you mean? In connection to what? Fun guy? I'm lost. What? In connection to... What with TikTok? Did I miss something? Oh, we did an hour? All right, hold on. We back at the beginning. Mm, mm, mm. There we go. Uh, hold on a second. Go back here. I missed something there, fun guy. Help me out with that. But yeah, that's the thing is that we have to be very, very careful with comparisons, because when we compare and when we criticize, it creates an avenue. All right, we're going to go back just a little bit. Okay, there we go. How long is that one there? Let me see here. Okay, that'll be 40 minutes. That'll work. I like it. Because you have to be careful. Because when we do that, right, we're not looking at the person for who they are. We're looking at the person for who we want them to be. General features and perhaps expression of terms used. Which terms? I'm still not, I'm not sure where we're going. Did I say something that you missed? Fun guy? I'm just trying to gain clarity. I'm not sure what expressions. When I said put up the five, it was to the list, if that's what you're talking about. I'm not sure. I also used to say, what can you do for me that I can't do for myself? I mean, a lot of us say that, and, and the answer is, I can be me, and I can bring me to the relationship, and we can benefit from both of us being together. No, we're not getting off topic. I got you. I got you, DJ, and, and I'm always leery of that, so keep tapping the screen, the hearts. I don't let myself go off on tangents because I will, so I always catch myself, but that's what you have to be careful, Tina, um, when, when somebody says... What can you bring? I bring me. 
And my individualism, my individuality in a relationship or any person's individuality is what makes the relationship stronger. The question is, do you see them as the individual? Go back to number four. And number four and number five are connected because often we criticize what we're unhappy about. We compare what we're unhappy about. But if we can look at a person's... Now, I don't say can I work at school system now, and I don't. <laughs> I loved it. That's the love. But yes, I went home very frustrated. The first three years was very difficult for me, Benny. The next 20 got better. Okay, I got you. But um, as far as TikTok workspace, okay, I got you. That's something that, that we'll have to talk about, fun guy, in detail at a different time. But the idea, guys, is that when we criticize and compare, often we're trying to show the person what it is. You'll make it. Just take it, take it year by year. Hey, good morning from Houston. Hey, Brown. So real quick, off the subject, guys, and Benny. Break your year into get to Christmas, get to Easter, get to the summer. That's what you do. Get to Thanksgiving, get to Christmas, get to Easter, summer. Break your year up into four points. The year goes by faster. Don't look at the whole year. Get to Thanksgiving, you know you got four days off. Get to Christmas, you know you got a week off. Get to Easter, you go, you got another week off. Year's over. From September to December is your longest stretch. But once you get to Christmas, you're past your longest stretch of the year without a break. You're good to go. That's what you do. Break the year up and focus on your kids. You got this. No try. Do. You got it. So again, guys, now, how many of you have felt that a person in your relationship, you're welcome. How many of you have felt that a, report, a person in your relationship criticized you more than they should have? And no matter what you did, it didn't seem to work. Put me in the chat if that was you. Put me in the chat. If you have been in relationships with somebody who criticized you where you just couldn't understand how were you supposed to respond to that criticism. My ex-wife was that way. You did that to them. I got you, Tina. Now, hopefully, you figured that out. And now as you go forward, it is something that you'll be able to offer. My ex-wife saw marriage one way and she saw dating one way she's from the Caribbean and she kept trying to change who I was not realizing that who I am is what made me attractive to her but she kept trying to change it to the point that it created a wedge between us and then I would respond where we weren't in a marriage we were married we were in a marriage but we weren't married and please understand what I mean by that is we were legally married, but we weren't in a marriage. There was no committed union. And a lot of people are walking through their unions just there. They're not actually living in a situation where they're trying to grow together. Now, remember this, and I'm going to go on to number six in a second, guys. There's only two things you can do in a marriage. Hear me out. Only two things. Grow closer together. Or grow apart. Now, how long it takes you to grow apart depends on your marriage. How long it takes you to become like this and stay like this depends on your marriage. But there's only two things you can do. Grow closer together or grow apart. And at some point when you're growing apart, somebody has to put the brakes on and go, I don't want to be in this no more. And that is why I'm happily divorced and happily remarried. Actually, this is my favorite program. I need to hear about myself as often as possible. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, fun guy. And in a lot of the people that I counsel with, and thank you, Tina, for having that revelation about yourself. Same thing, fun guy. Once we can realize that we were doing something negative, keep tapping the screen, guys. Once we realize that we were doing something negative, it's now on us to suck it up and fix it. Because if you do not fix it, you will carry it into the next relationship and you will punish the next person the same way. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry if I'm stepping on any toes today. Morning, sugar. Hey, sugar. If the husband father is the foundation of the family, the qualities should I look for? If the husband father is the foundation of the home, what qualities should I look for in a husband? Hmm. What qualities do you want him to have? Think about it. What do you want your husband to have? 
you can create that list long as it's long as realistic. If you want him to be stable, if you want him to be God fearing, if you want him to be a man that looks at his wife as a queen, if you want him to be a person that is open um, and able to communicate, these are all things that you have to know what you want. So when you are dating, you can see if that person is checking off those boxes. Those are realistic expectations. Ask yourself, what is it that you want? Maybe you want somebody completely opposite than the ex that you was with because that was just tragic. Okay, write that down. You have to have a target of what you want so you'll know what it looks like when you see it. You need to call. <laughs> you can fill out the, um, the discovery uh, call. We can get on a Zoom call, team. I would love that. This is what I do, guys. The one thing that I don't hide from is my pain. My pain of the 37 years of living like a whore, I learned a lot. And one of the ways that I serve God is by trying to heal women that were hurt by men like me or prevent men from going down the, the path that I went. So I embrace my pain so I can help others embrace theirs. And that's what you got to understand. There's people out here who want to help, but you got to tune out the noise first. But more importantly, you have to accept inside your head that I need to talk to somebody. I'm here. This is what I do. Okay. So after we got, and I said number five going to be tough. All right. And Tina, this is going to lead to what you were just mentioning. All right. Here we go. Are y'all ready for number six on the, the 10 ways personal expectations can turn the realistic, I mean, relationship can turn the relationship toxic, toxic. Good men want women like his mom. Not necessarily. I don't, I didn't want no woman like my mom and I'm a good dude. My mom had issues. My mom had things she had to fix because of who she is is why I had the issues I had. So no, I didn't want nobody like my mom. And my wife is not like my mom. There's some aspects of my mom in my wife. But my wife is not like my mom. She's better than my mom. Because she didn't have the hang-ups or the drama or the pain that my mom had. Be careful with that. Nobody wants a parent unless their parent was a good one. So we have to be careful when we say blanket like that. Because not many of us didn't have good parents. I didn't have. My mom wasn't. My mom didn't know how because she wasn't healed. My grandmother didn't know and there was no man around, so how were they going to be able to heal? So when they poured into me, I'm out here womanizing because two of the women that are raising me was actually promoting it. And it's the same way with some men. They're promoting their sons to be womanizers because that's all they knew. And that's all they saw. So we are the we are the we are the the products of what we were raised by. So we have to be careful because that also affects our choices. So the question is: Was your family healed? Was your family in a good position? Did you get good examples of what men and women should be? And is that now what you're looking for in your partner to recreate what you knew to be a good thing that you were raised from? Or do you want something totally opposite? I wanted something opposite. And even said to my mom, one of my biggest regrets is that I wasn't able to help my mom heal before she passed. And actually, if I believe if my mother had moved from New York down here to Delaware with me, I think she would still be here. Not all parents are good parents. Some parents are horrible because they, they're hurting too. When we talk about generational curses, we throw that, those words around so easy. But we don't actually stop and think what a generational curse is. That is the pain and the sins of the ones before us being poured into us and poured into them and so forth and so on. And nobody got off the hamster wheel and said, no, not me. I am the first member of my immediate family to graduate from college. Well, I have four degrees, so I've surpassed many in my family. Does that make me better than no? It makes me different. What makes me better is that I accepted my pain, dealt with my pain, and healed from my pain. Remember, Jesus healed the least amount in Nazareth, where he was from. That should have been where he healed the most. But because they couldn't get past that that was Mary and Joseph's son, they couldn't see him as nothing else. So all the gifts and all the wonders went out the window because they had short vision. Well, many of us are in toxic situations like that. And don't know how to get out of it because we were never taught. Ladies, please understand that a lot of men don't know how to be forgiving. 
or loving. So you want them to be and they don't know how to be, so then you hate them for it. Men, some women are hurting because of what they experienced. If they were never taught how to forgive themselves, you can't sit here and be mad at her that she don't know how to forgive you. See, it's all secular. My mother protected her toxic mindset to her children. And of course, we always attack those closest to us because we're close. You always attack the people close to you. You hurt the ones you love because they're close to you. Hey, how we doing? And that's what it is. So guys, please understand that. But how do we fix it? Well, this is what we're doing right now. So number six, here we go. Buckle up. Neglecting self-responsibility. Number six, neglecting self-responsibility. Number six, that's a big one. Neglecting self-responsibility. This is a big one, so please circle this one. Placing the responsibility of your happiness or fulfillment solely on your partner can lead to an unhealthy balance where personal growth and accountability are neglected. It is, and I just said this, it is not on somebody else. Thank you, Lady P. It is on you. Stop telling somebody else, you know I got trust issues. You don't even know me. How could you have trust issues with me? That's you bringing your foolishness to the table. Then why didn't you deal with them? You know, I'm real iffy with people who wear Jean-Paul Goudier cologne. Why? You don't know me. That means the fool that you was with was wearing it. So you going to punish me for that? I like Jean-Paul, by the way. I don't, I don't like women that move like that. You don't know her. The women that you've been with move that way. So why are you treating her like that? I'm just saying. You know, they, they, they like that. How? How, Sway? You don't know her. You don't know him. You're projecting your pain of past situations on a person that you just met. And then you create this, this facade inside your head. Yo, I saw she was on a live and she said, hello, sweetie, to this dude. That means she humping him. Bruh, how you make that connection? Because my ex, right, she used to do the same thing. I was on his page and this same chick keep coming by and saying hello to him. Don't you think he's handsome? So you don't think other women think he's handsome? What are you tripping on? I'm just saying, you know how they are. Them handsome ones do it. So you want the ugly one? Nah, I don't mess with ugly men. W which is it? <laughs> and on the hamster wheel we go. <laughs> Take responsibility for how you feel. Take responsibility for what has happened. Get the help you need. And don't project that out to someone else. Give someone a chance to be them. Go back to number four. The individuality, accountability it is, Tina, exactly. Deal with you. Thank you, D Lady P. Deal with you. Be responsible for you. And let me tell you the power that comes from dealing with you. When you put the work in for you, oh, somebody ain't coming up on no BS. Let me just tell you that. Y'all in the chat, rock with me here. When you have healed, speaking to the healed folks, when you have healed, what's your tolerance for BS? Put it in the chat. When you have healed from something or someone, what is your tolerance for the foolishness? Thank you. Here it comes. Thank you, Tina. What is your tolerance? Very little. Come on, Jen. Thank you. Absolutely none. Come on now. Y'all are all right. You know what healing does? Healing becomes a shield. When you have healed, thank you. When you have truly healed, the minute you hear ignorant noise, ah, 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 go on, go on, go on with that. I ain't got time for that. Ain't no, you cute, you heads, you got money, she heads, you, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead with that. I, I'd have heard enough, we good. And that's the problem. Many of you think you healed, but you're not. You talk a great game because social media done got you gassed up thinking that you're fixed, but you're doing the same things with people that you don't know, but you're hiding it well. And that's the crazy part in counseling that I get to because I ask questions. Your answers dictate where we go. And the funny thing is, some of you try to outthink me, right? And I love that part in counseling. So I'll ask a question, I get the dramatic pause, and it's like, 
And here's how I know I got you. You'll say, yeah, but. No, 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 yeah, but. Answer the question. Hey, Jamie, answer the question. Some of you will quickly try to, yeah, yeah, but you don't understand. That's why I need you to answer the question. Yeah, but you don't really know, like you don't know him. I don't need to know him. I'm talking to you. And what you're saying is not answering my question. See, as we get to the answers, that will actually show me everything that I need to know. You don't know what question I'm going to ask. And if you're in a counseling session trying to outthink your counselor, stop spending your money. You're wasting it because you're not hearing them, male or female. I tell people all the time, don't criticize somebody that you were with when you weren't criticizing them when you was up in it or they was up in you. And now they're horrible. Were you saying that when you was getting yours? Let's deal with how it went negative. Let's deal with what caused it to blow up. Let's deal with how it went from, oh my God, I really love this person to, oh, I despise them. Let's talk about that transition. What role did you play in that? I ain't play no role in it. You, you, you weren't in a relationship? Yeah, I was, but it ain't my fault. People change when they get comfortable. No, they do not. Comfort actually creates a problem with change. You change when you're uncomfortable because you want to find comfort. But first you have to deal with what makes you uncomfortable. Comfort comes from after the change. People change when they're uncomfortable, when they're in pain, when they're tired of feeling negative because they just don't want to be that way. Any cheater or abuser won't admit it. And and any and a cheater or an abuser won't admit it, admit to it, will they? Yes, I wrote a book on it. I'm an admitted cheater for 37 years, straight whore. Been with over 400 women sexually. I have no problem admitting it. I'm not that dude no more. That's what I was for the first 37 years. I aimed at the night as 19. Yes, you admit it when you own it. You admit it when you embrace it. You admit it when you understand why you were doing it. You admit it when you heal. See, that's when you'll know you're healed. Things that used to move you, don't. Words that used to get you charged up, don't. People that used to get all emotional about, hello. I was in the house with my ex-wife a couple of weeks back for my son's baby shower. We hugged, hello, and that was it. First time in 20-something years we'd actually been in the same place. Okay, and good to see you. Look nice. Take care. Didn't move me in the least. Why? My wife and my daughter sitting right here. I'm good. My son is, I'm here for my son. My friends are here. I'm good. I didn't come up to New York for her. And I didn't come up to be bothered with feelings that I had let go years ago. Now, what she felt don't matter to me. Did she care? I don't care. Healing grants you Comfort. Oh no, I get upset all the time. I'm human. <laughs> I'm, I get upset all the time. Listen, I was upset last week, and I and like I just mentioned earlier, I was ready to s scrap all this, and still might. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm at the point with social media. I don't know if I want to do this. I'm getting tired because I don't like competing with drama. And I don't know how much people really want to heal because they're connected to too much foolishness. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end. Eh, listen, we all have negative sides to us, Jamie, and it's important. All right, so I'm listening. Good morning. And by the way, the music is... Thank you. I appreciate that. It's an 80 side vibe today. Old head music today from, from 80 folks today. All right, so here's the question, guys. You know what I'm going to ask. How many of you struggled with taking responsibility for how the relationships you were in turned out? How many of you struggle with that right now? Because this is another reason why I wrote my book, 12 Steps to Recovering from Toxic Relationships. I created a guide because I knew people struggle with what do you do once you've gotten out of a bad relationship? You have played the victim. I got you. I understand that. My lunch is over. Okay, Benny. Enjoy. Thank you for I hope to see you next week. I am today. Got you. And it's important, guys, because this is where the hard work starts. Because once you take the responsibility, 
me because I was the issue in my there you go. Once we once we take the responsibility, yes, it's gonna hurt. Now let me just let me be very honest. When you come to the realization of the role that you played in your unhappiness, it's gonna open up an emotional floodgate. But you can lower that gate and start to heal once you realize I won't do that going forward. But we first have to embrace it. We have to embrace the pain. We have to embrace the drama that we created. Hey, Joyce. Well, I'm glad that you're here. Where are you checking in from, Joyce? And guys, keep tapping that screen. I told you we get over 20K likes. We're going to keep going. I own my own, and that's great, Eunice. One of the things that I do... In Indianapolis, great. So important that you take responsibility for your feelings. Keith, you took the word. Yes, it is super important. I said she left me at my lowest, but like you said, I can't expect courtesy and thoughtfulness when I never considered hers. You can't. And and her leaving you at your lowest was her choice. Okay. That just lets you know you got to make better choices so the next person won't leave. But before you can consider why somebody left you, you just said it in your own poor, in your own thing, Jamie. You never considered hers. Doesn't work that way. You can't expect something from somebody you never gave them, guys. I don't struggle, but my husband does, and which marriage is struggling? Okay, that's something that has to be fixed because you might need marital counseling or one of you might have to go to counseling to be able to bring back the information to turn key it to the partner. All we can do is what we can do for self. If your partner does not want to assist you, then you have to really consider where you are with your partner. But you cannot have expectations of a partner and you not put in the work for yourself. It's unfair to your partner and it's just silly. You can't do it. You can't blame them for the choices that you have made and not made. Well, if he would have just, and if she would have just, I would have, uh-uh. You had an opportunity to do that. Why didn't you? <sighs> And here's the best thing that I like when they go, you just don't understand. No, I just don't agree. There's a difference. And a lot of people will try to tell me I don't understand, even though they came to me for help, because they don't like that I'm not agreeing with them. My job is not to agree with you. My job is to make sure you understand how you got to where you are and how you can get past that with my help. That's what I do. And, and it's sometimes it's a fight. Not everybody wants to let go of their pain. All right, big question I'm going to ask. You're just being mean? Really? You think that, Diva? And why is that? <laughs> and I know what you're saying. No, no, I got you. I know what you're saying. And that's the other part. You're being mean. Here's what I, and I, and I should tell this to students. Let me, let me give you, I'm so glad you actually said that. That's why I laughed at it. I'm not being mean. If I was being mean, I'd be trying to be rude and disrespectful. I'm being firm. There's a difference between firm and mean. Firm doesn't feel good either when you're in pain. But mean is different. Mean is I'm trying to be disrespectful. Mean is I'm trying to add to your pain. Firm is I'm planting my feet on the ground with my hand out and saying, are you ready? And if you're not ready, then there's nothing else I can do until you're ready to reach out and grab my hand. I can't. I give this scenario to everybody I talk. And I'm going to get back to the list. I say, imagine climbing a mountain and your problems, your pains and everything is a big rock on your back. I can climb up the mountain with you, but I cannot carry the rock at all. I cannot advance at all, but I can travel with you. What I can do is when you need to take a break, I can hold the rock up with these big shoulders. Go to the bathroom, take a deep breath, you'll get something to eat, whatever you want to do. But when we come back for this rock to move up this hill, you got to do it. Now, here's the blessing. As we get to the top of the mountain, the rock gets smaller. And when we get to the apex, which is the top, you think you're there, and God will place another rock on your back, but here's the difference. You have the knowledge and the understanding of what it takes to get rid of the rock. So now as you go up the new mountain, you're traveling a new mountain with a new insight, new focus. So it don't take you as long to deal with your problems like it did before. And I now can go because you have all the tools you need. That's my job as a counselor. That's my job as the person that works with you. To eventually get you to fire me. Professionally though. Not for negative reasons. Fire me because you go, Keith, I got this. Cool. And if I've done that, then I've done my job. It's like the equalizer. Once Denzel has killed everybody, he go on about his business. Because <laughs> there's somebody else out there to help. 
<laughs> Denzel blows up a whole country, then goes, you got it? Okay, I'm out. <laughs> Somehow he done ended up in Italy. <laughs> Knocking off people. But again, he's helping. <laughs> I want God's help so bad. Take your time. His voice is still there. It is the noise around you, um, Diva, that's blocking you from hearing his voice. His voice hasn't gone anywhere. His voice is there for all of us. But sometimes the voice is going to come from someone else's lips, Diva. Always be open to listen to those who want to pour into you. But you have to take the lid off the cup first. God is always around us speaking. The problem is we can't hear it because we're stuck in our pain or we're stuck in our own BS. And God doesn't pierce through that because we do have will or free will in this. We have to humble ourselves to go, where's the help going to come from? To my eyes, to the hills my eyes go. And that's when all of a sudden the help shows up. That's what keeps me showing up. And it's tough because sometimes I just want to just toss it all away. All right. So number seven. You guys ready for number seven? And again, I want to thank everyone for being here. I am Keith K.L. Belvin, crisis specialist, author, educator, and all those things, as you know. And I am glad you're here. But we're going to go on to number seven. And you guys put the sevens in the chat. And while you're doing that, I'm going to just, again, remind everybody that we are talking about ten ways that personal expectations can turn relationships into toxicity. Also, if you miss any of this or you got to go, this will be replayed over on my YouTube channel. Please go over and link and subscribe and share. Also, make sure you tell your friends and family, this is what I do. I can't reach everybody, but I can reach more people with your help. And again, if you have not purchased my book, 12 Steps of Recovering from a Toxic Relationship, more ways to be able to get yourself assistance. This is like having me in your pocketbook, me in your bag. Me and your briefcase to be able to guide you on what to do and how to do it. Written along the same lines that you see me doing right here to be able to help you move on from a negative relationship. This is how I offer help. As well as if you need, if you think you're ready for counseling, reach out. But don't waste my time if you just want to play games and just want to talk to me privately. That's okay. I will set the session, but my hope is that you want to move forward. And let me do understand that I do get paid for what I do. <laughs> But I try to work with everybody because um, I know these are some desperate times too. But yes, I am a professional and there is a fee to my sessions. And I only take insurance if you're in the Delaware area. So if you're not in the Delaware area, then it is at pay. And I know that can be very costly, but again, that's something we can discuss. I'm always open to have a conversation and there's always a way to try to get you some help if possible. All right, here's another big one. The next couple ones are going to be big ones. Because I put them towards the end because I knew they were going to step on some toes. So number seven in ways of personal expectations. Ignoring boundaries. Ignoring boundaries. And I'll get into that in a second. Let me just, Tina's going to put that in the chat. Ignoring boundaries. Number seven, ignoring boundaries. Thank you, Tina. Expectations that lead one to ignore or cross personal boundaries of the partner can create a toxic dynamic. Here's where one person needs and desires dominates the relationship. Your partner tells you that they have a problem with somebody raising their voice and you do it anyway and say, that's just how I am. You knew that when you started dating me person tells you they have an issue with money and you harp on it and you create an uncomfortable environment and then you argue because that's how I am that's just what I do I'm trying to help you and then you make them the victim because they can't take your foolishness so now I'm going to turn to the chat how many of you put me in the chat how many of you have crossed boundaries in a relationship just because you wanted what you wanted. Be real with me. Put it in the chat. I know you got to think about it. Put me in the chat. Thank you, Tina. Put me in the chat if you blew through a stop sign just because it's what you wanted. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, JT. And it's important because this is how we actually start the healing process or this is how we trigger the memories necessary for us to be able to deal with some things. Thank you, niece. Many of us will do that. Many of us will literally see the person put their boundaries down and be like, Pfft. and here's the worst one when a person tells you to stop. 
and you go, no, I got something to say. No, and you're like, no, you're going to hear me. That's actually a form of abuse. The person told you to stop. You don't know if a person has reached that point where they're unable to process any more information. But you want what you want so bad that we're going to have this fight. We're going to have this hard conversation. You don't know what you are triggering in a person. And they may not have the faculties. They may not have the wherewithal to be able to express to you that you are sounding like their father. You are sounding like their mother. You are sounding like their ex-wife. You are sounding like their sister, their brother. You're sounding like the uncle who took advantage of them. You're sounding like the aunt who took advantage of them. And you don't realize it because the person never really dealt with that pain and they don't know how to get you to turn that off. Other than please don't do but that's a soft boundary for you. I'm plowing right through that. Because I want what I want. And guys, it's important. Is that healing requires compassion. Personal healing requires compassion. And I talk about that in the book too. Granting yourself grace. Granting yourself compassion. Let me see. I think that's chapter... Let me see. Don't blame yourself. That's number chapter three. There it is. Chapter four. Offer yourself patience and grace. I wrote it about in the book because you got to be able to say to yourself, oh, my God, Keith, you was just so stupid. Why'd you do that? Also, you have to see the value of the relationship. You have to see the value of the person that you say you want. You should not want to hurt someone else. And if you are hurting someone that you say you cared about or loved, then you really need to get some help. Think about that for a second, guys. Now, here's a tough one. Here's a tough one. How many of you in this chat right now, 18 people here, have told somebody they love them and you did the exact opposite away from them now, I don't care what it was but how many of you have told somebody you love them and as soon as you left the house did something totally opposite than what you just told that person and keep tapping the screen for the hearts thank you Tina, thank you Jamie and it's important that you guys acknowledge that because too many times thank you Foxy that's the problem right there is that that's that should trigger to us i need to go get some help because you either lie to them that you love them or you're lying to yourself so as soon as you hit the streets it was whatever either way there's some lies some major lies being told and i can tell you because i was that guy most important i need to hear that as much as possible compassion yes can Passion, grace and compassion is the key, guys. We have to forgive ourselves, but then we also have to grant ourselves grace for saying, I just didn't know I was stupid. Let me fix that. And then we have to be able to not beat ourselves up. I don't beat myself up. I have asked for forgiveness publicly to all the women that I did dirty. I have asked for forgiveness to the women that I have dated, the baby mamas, all of that. And I'm good. It is not for me to heal the people that I hurt. It is for me to say I am sorry, so at least it's on the table. What they do is on them because I can't fix the person that I hurt unless they ask me for something in terms of information or something like that. I didn't know I was stupid facts. Okay. And, and in my counseling sessions, I have had people have breakdowns where it's like, oh, my God, I didn't realize I was. I get it. But once we do realize it, what are we going to do? How are we gonna, what are we going to do now? So let's go. Let's 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 do something now about it. Let's let's figure out what we can do now because now that we realize it, we got to go do something. All right, here we go. Pick up the pace a little bit in here. The one area I cannot afford the luxury of procrastination. I don't think any of us can afford it for procrastination, but it happens and it's triggered by a lot of things, fun guy. We just have to be careful when we find ourselves um, in a position of procrastination. Why? A lot of times procrastination is tipping our hand. It's it's it, it shows up. It's it's telling to something. Whether it's fear, whether it's um, 
disappointment. A lot of things happen can come from procrastination. There's a lot of reasons why we procrastinate. All right. What is it that I want to hear? There we go. Let's go to the 90s. And so, when we ignore the boundaries, that is actually so disrespectful. And I can tell you because I've been there. And I've done it. And took pleasure in doing it. I was a very nasty and negative dude. That's why I go so hard now. As a man of faith, it baffles me sometimes that God allowed me to still be here. He had every reason to remove me from this planet. I got lucky. It's also what motivates me to stay in pocket. Because if I want to go out now and try to test that faith and be like, God, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to pay a price for that. I'm good. And I just want you all to understand that is that you can't continue to embrace the negativity and then wonder why you can't find something positive. You have to let go, forgive yourself, and then work on healing. So when you meet somebody new, if they're healed and you're healed, the two of you can go out and just be a blessing to yourselves and everybody else. Hurt people, hurt people, abuse people, abuse people, and two hurt people cannot heal themselves by themselves. They can't. And if I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Jada Smith's book, and when you... I've already listened to Will's book. I'm not in, I'm, I'm about 45, no, I'm about an hour into the book and I can already see the trauma bond that her and Will have. Both of them were raised pretty much by their grandmothers. Both of their mothers was in abusive situations. Jada mom was using drugs. Will's mom was being beaten by um, the father who had an alcohol issue. So there's substance abuse there. Both of them were environments where their talents lifted them past the negativity they were dealing with. So when you start to see the, the, the pathway of their youth, you see why their trauma bonds led them to each other. Also, you start to understand why her connection to Tupac connected her to Will. The talent, you can see it. And if you pay attention when people write their own book, there's something you can draw from that because there's always something in the book you don't see in the public eye. And, and same thing with music. I'm a big music junkie. When you listen to music of people that wrote their music when they were in a painful positioning, if you pay attention to it, you can hear things that you don't see social media or the media create. Phyllis Hyman, the same way. Go listen to Phyllis Hyman's last album. She completed the album. It wasn't due to be released until later on in the year, but she unalived herself before the album came out. Well, the album, her last album, turns out to be basically a long SI note, a long unaliving note. She literally was just put it all out in the music that she was not going to be here anymore. Unfortunately, nobody listened to it deeply before she did what she did. There's always clues, guys. She told us. But unfortunately, the album came out after she was gone. And now when you go back, and you can list it on YouTube if you want to pay for it, you just look at the titles. And and I have, we did a show here. It's over on um, my Facebook page. We, I did a whole show on Phyllis Hyman, so if you want to go look for it, it's there. Because I did a whole show that her whole album was basically a long SI note. So let's go to number eight. These are the deep ones, guys. I know I'm gonna I know I'm gonna have some I know I'm gonna have some deep breaths going on in these last couple ones. But they're needed. Okay? Thank you, Tina. Follow Tina's lead, guys. Let's get 15 eights. I think about scripture says, why are the wars among us? And that and, and fun guy, that's where scripture comes in big because scripture can actually help level us out that this was written, but it speaks to what I am right now. That's one of the powers of scripture as well. Thank you, LP. Thank you, Lady P. Thank you, Foxy. Come on, let's get some more eights, guys. Let me get about 12 more eights. Come on. Let's go. So I know you're still with me in the chat. Come on, let's get those eights and let's keep this going. Also, let's tap the screen. We're over 20,000 likes. We're going to go for 30. Try to shoot for 30 before we're done. Hey, thank you, Virtual. Thank you, Niece. Keep tapping that screen. Let's get those hearts going. Let's get those hearts. Let's get the 30K hearts. I knew we'd get over 20. Let's keep going. And I'll gladly answer any questions that you have. I am here for it today. I don't have a session until a little bit later on, so I'm going to answer your questions if you want to ask them when we're all done. All right, so let's keep going. Let's keep tapping that screen. Okay, let's get a couple more. Come on. Everybody nodding off on me today. Come on, let's get some more eights. 
And I know y'all keeping notes. And again, if you want to watch the replay, if there's anything that you missed, this will be over on my YouTube channel. So let's go to number eight. Now, this was me all the way, guys. So this one I, I, I know wholeheartedly. Number eight of the 10 ways personal expectations can turn a relationship toxic. Manipulative behaviors. Manipulative behaviors. Number eight, manipulative behaviors. Right down my alley. Number eight, manipulative behaviors. Okay? Number eight, manipulative behaviors. Using expectations as a tool to manipulate or control a partner's behavior, choices, or actions can be toxic and harmful to both individuals involved. Some of you, and if you want to be honest with me, you can say, we try to manipulate how a person feels or to make certain choices that benefit us. Because that's the expectations that we have. Can things of the past really cause you to act out? Or they knew? No, they definitely are. Um, is that Stefan? If I got this, is that step? Is that Steph Leon? If I got that right, or Steph? Yes, because our past experiences trigger emotions that cause behavioral choices. We are the products of our experiences. We are the products of our past. Every one of us sitting here right now watching this screen are the products of decisions that we made just five minutes ago. If you're on this screen, you made a decision to be here. I've been on for an hour, whatever it is, uh, almost two hours. So those choices all have an effect because now everybody that's here that got the information made a choice. So now go back further. And then go back further and let some of those experiences be negative. If they were not dealt with, then those seeds were tucked into the dirt to blast them into what? We don't know. All we have is the behavior to be able to tell us. So the reason why as a, as a, as a counselor I have to study psychology is I have to understand how the brain works. I have to understand that unresolved issues create unwarranted behavior. So many of us, when you and, and here's what I want you to pay attention to. Put, put me in the chat if you heard this. You act just like your father. You act just like your mother. You act just like your auntie. You know what? Your mom was the same way. Your sister was the same way. Your brother was the same way. Your father was the same way. Put that in the chat. That's not by accident. Thank you. That's not by accident, guys. We are the product of our influences in home and outside. All you West Side girls act that way. All you East Side girls act that way. All you Up North girls act that way. All you West Side boys act that way. All you Down South dudes act that way. All you up, 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 all you City boys act that way. Your environment plays a role too. And it is from your past. The beauty of it all is that once we put the brakes on and say, I don't want to go any further, we can plant new seed. We can till new earth. We can change our lives. Y'all want to see what I'm talking about? Go to Foxy Silver's page and look at some of her pictures and go, yeah, she puts it in the gym. That's what she does. Well, it didn't happen overnight. She had to make a decision at some point. That's the direction I'm taking myself. Body reflects it. And it's the same with your mental and your emotional positioning. The minute you can recognize what has been painful, Tina has mentioned today that a couple things I hit on, Opened her eyes to some things. There we go. But yes, to your question. So, how many of us, when we look back on it, use people? Because we just expected to do it. We wanted to do that. I want us to embrace some of our negativity right now. How many of us went into the relationship knowing we are going to use this person because they were usable? How many of us already knew? Me for convenience. Come on now. I'm glad you're being honest with me. And as I say this in counseling sessions all the time, thank you for being honest. Thank you, Jamie. This is where the healing really has to start. You have to acknowledge what you did. Some of us, from the minute we saw a certain person, or the minute they started talking, or the minute that their honest gesture was one that we knew we could manipulate, it was over for them. They just didn't know. Many of us used our guile, many of us used our voice, and many of us used our bodies to get a person to feel that we had their back, that we loved them, that we cared. 
And unfortunately, a lot of people take sexual energy and think that is a loving energy. It is not. They're not even on the same plane. But unfortunately, the trigger of the body through sexual energy can have you believing that this person truly cares. No, this person just knows how to tantalize your flesh. They haven't even reached anywhere close to your soul. You just think that they have. And many of us know how to manipulate that in such a way that we have the person believing that that physical thing that they're feeling is what love is. And some of us will go as far as going, do you feel that? Did you see how much I cared about you? You show, I, I showed you how much I loved you. Really? Because you tried to pound them through the mattress? You tried to ride them into submission? And that's love? Nah. It's just you're real good at sex. And many of us, because we've never actually experienced real love, we go, this must be something special. Because not too many people have gotten me here. No. They're just real good at pleasure. But that has nothing to do with the pleasure that comes from a, a, a spiritual bonding from someone that you truly care about. It becomes a non-physical thing that tantalizes the physical. Most of us have never experienced it. It's not the same. Thank you, Lady P. It is not. But if we don't have those conversations, then a person thinks it is because they surround themselves with a bunch of people who say, girl, he love you. Dude, she love you. She wouldn't have did that with you if she didn't love you. He wouldn't have did that if he didn't love you. Instead of somebody saying, yo, your heart will change the way it beats when you see the person that you love call, walk into a room. What? Yeah. When you're really in love, them just walking into a restaurant excites you. What are you talking about? Get out of here. What kind of movie stuff are you talking about? Well, I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I experienced. This is the stuff that movies are created for. Music is created for. Yes, I honestly believe that and have experienced it. You crazy, Jamie? Of course. I get excited when I see my wife walk around the house. And I definitely got excited when she came back from her cruise after like nine days or whatever it was. Just not having her in the house. I was like, man, listen. When I got to travel and be away from my wife, I listen, it's, I, I'm in a hotel like I, we talk all the time because I miss her. Your, the way your heartbeat changes when you're really in love. The problem is, guys, we have this is like, right? And many of us have reduced love to like right here. Love is up here. Love is way up here and it's not even in the same neighborhood. City is like. But because many of us have never experienced real love, this is what we think love is. So when we're here and like is really feeling some type of way, we think we're in love. You are not. Do you think attraction is essential for true? Of course, it's part of it. Attraction is part of it. But attraction is a very small part of it. I do understand true love. I've had the luxury of having it and losing it. Hence, when you see that, that, that term, it is better to have loved than lost than to never have loved at all? Well, it makes sense because you would rather have loved somebody and lost them to never have felt that. Because once you felt it, you're forever changed. Many people have never felt it, so they don't believe it. And I get it. That is why you see some incredible movies made, songs made. You hear people who are in, hey, what's going on, big boy? You hear people who really, truly love, their conversation changes. Well, the reason why people say it's not real, because they haven't experienced it. And you would not be wrong for you. If you've never experienced it, of course you're going to say it don't exist. And you would be okay. You would be right for you. That doesn't change what the person is explaining to you. And once you get it, that's why it feels so good. We just have tried to reduce it to a level that it was never supposed to be on. Love was never supposed to be on the same level as like. Not even. We just didn't know that. Many of us have never actually experienced true unadulterated love. Thank you. And I'm glad you did, Lady P. And that is why when you see widows or widowers... When you see them say, I don't know how I'm going to start over, they're explaining to you that a part of them was lost. If you've never experienced that, you don't know what that feels like to even, some people just the thought of not being with their partner scares them. And if you've never been there, I'm just trying to explain it to you. 
It exists, trust me. Got you. So, number nine. And I know that because it's also part of, like, in the Aramaic language, there's 13 definitions of love. Like, I can love a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, love my kids, and love my wife, and all three are different loves. We don't stop and think about that. We throw the word love around so easy. I love my car. I love my kids. I love my wife. I love my dog. All the same way? You can't. That is why you have to understand that the true love, the true love that comes from you and a person bonding is life changing. And when you've had that change and to have it removed, the emptiness is harsh because it's like, will I ever find that again? And it is very difficult. Many of us have never experienced this. So we tell people foolishness like get over it. Get over it? You still upset? It's been five years. It's been two years. I don't care if it's been a hundred years. I tell folks, grieve as long as you need to. And when you're ready, there's enough of us here to help you. But let's continue. Let's continue. All right? Let's continue. That's where I'm at, Mr. Keith. I got you. I feel you. My biggest fear. I got you, Sharitha. Guys, remember this. If you were blessed to have been given a partner that moved you to that level that I'm talking about and they are no longer there, thank the Lord that you were able to experience that. Tuck that away. Now you have a divining rod to help you when you're dating. Now you have a boundary. Now you have an understanding. Now when you're dating, dating is going to look different to you. Foolishness you talking, I don't even be bothered with because if you're not even sound, if it's not even sounding like something I can get with, I don't even want to waste my time. Because as you learn somebody and they learn you and they understand what you went through and you get to meet them, they're going to realize they got to work harder because you have been loved. So when they meet you, they're going to understand they got to work harder because true prizes, people work hard for those. Don't rush, but make sure you're healing first, big boy. Make sure that you're okay with you. Make sure that you're in a position that you're ready to even get back in the game. If you believe you are, then you have made way with an understanding that it is okay to now give this to someone else. That's the key. That's why I get go. Yes, and you're going to scare off a lot of people, Sharitha. They're going to be scared because they're going to be like, oh, no, I, can't, I can't replace that energy. Then you're not the one. See, an honest brother will say, I can't be him and know what I tried. But I can be me. And I hope that in time, you'll give me enough time to show you that I would love to be a part of your life. They're not competing. They're not competing with your ex. They're showing you that they can be who they are. That they can be an addition to your life. Your memories of your partner will actually help as you two get to know each other because that person is going to realize if she's allowing me here I'm doing good if she's letting me in after everything she shared with me oh I'm doing good if he's allowing me to come close to him after what he told me happened to him and his wife I'm doing good and that motivates you to keep going that motivates you to actually get there and when you get there You'll say a quiet prayer. Thank you, Lord, because I never thought I could be here again. I never thought you'd send me somebody else, Lord. Thank you. But you got to heal first. Can't do that bleeding out in front. Can't do it. Ready for number nine, guys? I don't know, mess around and have y'all weekends all messed up today. I tell you, I'm here. I'm ready for it today. And y'all better tap those screens. Why are we playing here? Y'all better tap those screens. This, <laughs> fun guy, patience, patience, patience. If I miss it, I go back and catch it. All things come to an end in this life. Ha, is What is the last part? Everything comes to an end at some point. I don't know what the last part is. Fendation. I don't, the, the, clear up the last part for me, fun guy. Hey, Lachey. No, I got you, big boy. And it's okay to get emotional about it, Sharitha. 
It's okay. That's part of the healing process. Or as my grandmother, who country Baptist, would say, cry tonight, boy, and get your ass up and start living your life. Ooh. But she was right, though. Our pain lets us know we're still alive. The healing lets us know that we can live. I'll take a second with that. Our pain lets us know that we're still alive. Our healing lets us know that it's okay to live. Got to take time with it. Have foundation, know the comfort of the comfortless. Of course. Sharitha, I'm emotional also, but I need to hear this. Okay, Lady P, I got you. I'm here for it. So number nine, guys. And I'm here. This is, And like I said, if, and again, let me just give the disclaimer. If I'm triggering you and you need to go, go ahead. I know, and I know when I got into this, I know there was going to be something that was going to be triggering. Uh, I missed the grandmother quote. Can anybody repeat it, please? My grandmother said, cry tonight and then get your ass up and start living your life. <laughs> That's what she told me when I first came after my divorce and I was broken. After my separation, I was back home and I couldn't believe I was back home and I was in tears. She kicked open the door and said, boy, cry tonight and get your ass up and start living your life. Ain't no woman going to break you because God did not create you to be broken by no woman. But you got to fix you and you got to be better. She said, you want to get back at your wife? And I thought she was like, oh, she's going to help me throw in the trunk and we good. She said, become a better you. Become the husband that she wished she had. And let me tell you how smart that old country woman was. Forget all the degrees I have. She knew exactly what I needed to hear. God gave her exactly what I needed to hear. And in 2000, I went on to become more than I could have ever become with her. So much so that one of our last conversations, she said, I guess I was the albatross around your neck keeping you from being a better you. No, boo-boo, had nothing to do with you. I was keeping me from being a better me. And once I understood me, God sent me somebody that was going to help better me and I better them. That's why you have to heal. But you have to trust that there's more out there for you. So, number nine. Which goes right into what we're talking about for number nine. Number nine on the 10 ways of personal expectations is unrealistic expectation of perfection. Let me say that again because I, I, I got to take my time so Tina can get it. Unrealistic expectation of perfection. Number nine on the 10 ways personal expectations can turn into there you go thank you tina expecting perfection in a partner or in a relationship can lead to constant disappointment and undermines the acceptance and love that are essential for a healthy relationship now i'm going to read that again these are the tough ones here expecting perfection in a partner or in a relationship can lead to a constant disappointment and undermines the acceptance and love that are essential for a healthy relationship you want this person to be perfect for you because you want what you want which is blinding you to they are a good person with you you want what you want your level of perfection has you seeing here when this person is the perfect person for you right here, just being who they are. But you can't see that. Because you want what you want. You have a perfectional way of saying, this is what a man should be in my life. This is what a woman has to be in my life. And if it's not that, I don't want to hear it. Not realizing that what you need is a person who's going to say, girl, go sit down. Boy, go sit down and heal. I'm here to help. Go sit down and get some rest. Why don't you go eat a meal? Because you seem cranky like the Snickers commercial. Here's a Snickers. Okay. <laughs> There's some truth in that Snickers commercial in terms of, of counseling. Many of you show up like in that Snickers commercial and I have to hand you a Snickers to get you to calm down. So trust me, there's some truth in that Snickers commercial. I love it. But many of us, we see it the way we see it. And because we see it that way, we're not trying to hear nothing else. Thank you, Divine Fire. 
And this this expectation of perfection, here's the creepy part about that, right? We will have this expectation of perfection for our partner, but we won't turn that insight on ourselves. We don't make those same demands of self. We got people saying he has to be, she has to be, it better be like this, she better be like, and we don't make any of those demands on ourselves. And then when asked about it, look, I just like what I like. I just want what I want. Don't question me. Ooh, okay. Yes, making me aware of myself and toxins I created in my last relationship. I understand, teen. I'm here for that. And let me just give y'all something, too. Good information will always find fertile ground. I've always taught that way. Because kids used to say, my mom says that, Mr. B. My dad says that, Mr. B. My grandmother says that. Good information will always find fertile soil. I'm no greater than anybody else. I'm just a person that's been through some things. And I went to school. Concerned with one's own self, interest, cynical, cynical behavior. Exactly. But many of us are cynical. Because the perfection is because... And let me tell you what the reason why we want perfection in our partners. Because we feel we'll be safe if we get it. Many of us want perfection in our partners because if they're perfect, we're good. They're mine. They got me. I'll be protected. I'll be loved. She's the dream. He's the dream. No. The world. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. I just think the world needs more people who will open up and listen to others. More like me? Yeah, the world might get a little boring. <laughs> I'm, old, I'm an old boring guy right now. Basic endowment of human nature. Very true, fun guy. So, number nine, unrealistic expectations of perfection. So, let me ask you guys this question. How many of you, be honest with me, be real with me. How many of you didn't realize how good a person was in a relationship with you until you saw how good they were to somebody else? Put me in the chat. How many of you did not realize how good the person was in the relationship with you until you saw them, heard about them, or whatever with somebody else. Thank you, Tina. Be honest with me. Thank you. And I, I'm praying that they are a um, user. Yes, I do. The link is in the bio. The free discovery call link is there, um, big boy. Just fill out the free discovery call link, and it'll set up a Zoom call. All my calls, the first call is always free because I don't know if I'm the counselor for you, but I'm always open to listen. Me, and it hit me like a ton of brooks. I got, I got you, Jamie. Because that's the key, guys, is that one of the things that my ex-wife deals with, because my sons fill me in, and I have to tell them, just ignore it. My success, my happy marriage and everything else, it drives my ex-wife crazy. Well, sadly, that's her own issue. I pray for her and the mother of my children. I pray for everybody because I can't heal anybody if they don't ask me to. But I can pray for you and the Lord will send you somebody to heal you. But I'm always open if somebody wants to have a conversation. Children included. When you got adult children too. When you have, no, it's not her loss. We weren't good together, Divine. I can't say that. I had to grow into being this person. And I had to do a lot of fixing. And I had to become a better me. I just matured after we weren't together. And the Lord sent me somebody who was going to understand me. I actually asked for it. My wife said, my wife prayed to the Lord to send me somebody who loves her. And I prayed to God, send me somebody who understand me. Because I knew I was crazy. And it actually worked out that way. But understand that sometimes some unions were never supposed to happen. And that's what happened with my ex-wife and I. We just should have never been together. But then once we had children, we had to try to find a way to be parents. And that kind of kept us together when we should have never been together. It was a it was a, a poor relationship from the start. Poor marriage to start. I was a bad husband. She was a bad wife. So I can't put it on her. It was as much my fault than anything else because we just shouldn't have been together. I was left with no explanation or closure. The closure will come from you, big boy. You can't expect somebody who hurts you to close things for you because they, you don't necessarily know if you're going to get that. The closure comes from you healing you. 
If the person didn't give you any explanation, fine. Then what you do is you work on you. You say to yourself, okay, let me replay some things. Maybe there were some red flags I missed. Or maybe that person just couldn't deal with the gift that you were. So it has maybe has nothing to do with you. But the key thing is get yourself together so when you go out to date, you're not fearful of the next person that you meet or bringing any type of baggage from the past forward that you're clear enough to be able to have that conversation. I dated a woman or I was married to a woman that just broke out. I, to this day, I have no idea. So one of the things that I have changed in my life is to have better conversations with people that I date early so we can have a more open. Think of the things that were not working and then build on those things to help give yourself new boundaries for the new people that you may come across. And thank you, Divine Fire. I appreciate that. Well, transparency is my thing because there's no reason not to be. I was for 37 years a misogynistic whore. I was the wolf. I had to grow into becoming the shepherd. Well, you can't be the shepherd if you don't explain to people what you were like when you were the wolf. And I learned that from scripture. Paul would meet people and say, hey, how you doing? I'm Paul. And everybody, like, cool, you're a man of God. He go, yeah, well, you knew me as Saul. Wait a minute, the dude who was out here killing men, women, and children? Yeah, that was me. Hold on, I'm not him no more. But he would greet you as the new him. But then he would explain to you how you knew about him. And then the choice was yours. You could go, I'm not messing with that dude. He used to kill people. Okay, then Paul isn't for you. But other people would say, but I like this guy. Let me learn more. And we all have to understand is that I am not for everybody. Some people will look at me and go, I, once a cheater, always a cheater. I ain't trying to hear nothing that man got to say. And that is okay. I'm not for them. But if I don't put it out there, I don't know who needs to hear me. So that's what I do. That's why I write books. That's why I talk. And I listen to people and they tell me what they need. I try to create it or I try to be there for them. The frustrating part for me is when I see people going in directions that I know is hurting them and I can't say anything. Because I can't, they can't hear me because they're stuck in other situations. So I can only be here with my candle in the darkness and I just got to sit here until people go, it's so dark over here. What's that light? I've been here <laughs> waiting on you. That's what we do. That's what I do. All right. Y'all ready for the last one? And I appreciate the, 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 the back and forth. I love it. Like I said, I missed y'all last Friday. I was frustrated last Friday. Like I said, I came this close to just shutting it all down. Yet the path you like. Yeah. We have to hold our candles up because when we heal, it's not about us anymore. Well, it's not it's not supposed to be. It's about who else can I help now? Okay, you helped yourself. Who did you help? And that's what I that's what I do. It's okay that I might be healed, but how many people can I help? And that's what I live my life on. I live my life to try to help other people. And it pays off. And it's frustrating sometimes you see people going and dealing with things or dealing with people or doing certain things that's hurting themselves. But I can't save the world, but I can just save the ones that show up. And I pray for the rest. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for number 10? It's been a tough list. And I know I've triggered a lot of emotion today, but I'm here for it. And I'm glad that you took the time with me. Keep, her, keep tapping that screen. Let's get the 30K likes, guys. And we need more people like that care. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. Um, Thunder Smile, I hope. I try to start it with me, but it was somebody that reached out to me. So let's go. Lady P with the 10. Let's get, we got 31 people here. Cool. Let's go to, let's see if we can get half of that. Let's go with 16 tens. Come on, let me get 16 tens. Let's count them down. 16 tens from you guys in the chat. Let's go. I got one already. Put a 10 in the chat. We're going to go for 16 tens as we finish up this list, and I will gladly answer any questions. That's number two. Number three. Number four, big boy number five, Jamie number six, come on, number seven, come on, PJ, number eight, JT, got you, PJ, number nine, number ten, come on, five more, or six more, come on, user, I see you, DJ, I see you, 11, come on, five more, let's go, keep you guys on your toes today, because I know it can get very emotional sometimes in here, and I try to lighten the loop, come on, give me, where, 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 where's everybody else at, there we go, Tina, oh, there we go, I was wondering where Tina went, there we go, got Tina too. Tina done went through a whole box of tissue. We got you, Tina. I'm here for you today. You held me down last week. I got you this week, Tina. 
Two more. Come on. Two more. There we go. That's 14. 15. Who's going to be the last one to make number 16? There we go. I got you, Tina. Anytime. Thank you. And I appreciate you for being a moderator. I need one more 10. Come on. Somebody stop playing. And don't somebody double back and try to put a 10 there. I know if you put a 10 up. Really? I can't get that last that last 10? Y'all playing? All right. I'll take 15. All right. Here we go. Number 10. On the 10 ways... Personal expectations. See you, Lachey. I got you. Thank you, Lachey. Personal expectations can turn relationships toxic. Thank you. And, oh, thank you. I'm going to get to that, DJ. Oh, thank you so much for the Purple Hearts for Tina. All right. The last one, guys. Very, very important. Lack of compromise and collaboration. One of the 10th the way that personal expectations can turn relationships toxic is the lack of compromise and collaboration. Lack of compromise and collaboration. There you go, Tina. Thank you so much. Expecting things to always go your way and not being able to compromise can lead to a one-sided relationship where mutual respect and collaboration are lacking. I hear people all the time say, I ain't compromising in no relationship. It is what it is. If he don't like me, he ain't dealing, I ain't dealing with him. And if she can't understand what I am, I ain't dealing, I ain't compromising. Ain't nobody changing me. What kind of relationship is that? And most of the time it's coming from people who are single. It's coming from people who have blown up their own marriages. Compromise is the understanding that it is better to just give up on the argument than to fight to win and push somebody away from you. Compromise that it is better to go ahead and eat at that restaurant tonight because the rest of the week she's going to love you tremendously. It's better to go to that movie that you don't want to see because she really wants to or he really wants to. We compromise. Actually, Thunder Smile just said it. We compromise in this life. We must compromise. But when you're in a relationship, if you can only have it your way, you are slowly causing a person to not want to be bothered with you. Because collaboration comes on, what do you want to do? I don't know what you want to do. What you in the mood for tonight? I don't know. Let's figure it out. All right, come on, let's get in the car. And we talk. A relationship is a union. A union requires growth. A, a union requires health. And if it leads to a marriage, then those same foundational things that you put in the union of the relationship flow into the marriage, except now you're committed to death. See, we don't look at it what it's supposed to be. That's why it's so easy to walk away from it. You must compromise when you're in a relationship. Compromise has one to look through different lens. Yes. Let me explain something to you. Right over my shoulder right here. Those two master's degrees right there, right? I don't have those if my wife doesn't edit my papers. I don't edit nothing. My wife edited those papers. And I tell folks all the time, those are more her master's degrees than mine. I got an A on every paper I wrote because she organized my voice into the proper format that the professors required because me and paperwork, I just don't like it. That's the collaboration. And yes, they can only put one name on a degree, but I let everybody know every chance I get. I'm only as great as the help that my wife has given me. That's the collaboration. That's the partnership. That's the compromise. Understand that I can't do it, but she can do it. And she compromised knowing that he's going to get the degree, but we benefit from it. That's why I said to you, many people don't understand. Love is here. Like is here. Stop acting like like is love. And if you've never experienced anything that I'm talking about, now you got some work to do. This is why we get so moved when we watch great love movies. Great romantic movies. The reason why we get so moved is because a part of us goes, I wish I had that. I will. I want that back. And some of us go, I got that right now. That's what I'm talking about. 
And then some of us sit in those same romantic movies and be like, ain't nobody trying to die for nobody like that. Ain't nobody feeling like that. Ain't nobody caring about nobody like that. Those people exist too. Those are the people that come out on a beautiful, sunny afternoon and go, it's too hot. I don't even like this city. Ain't got nothing to do with the moment. Those are the people that go on a vacation and hate the fact that a potato wasn't done. So now they're ready to burn the whole resort down because a potato wasn't done. See, I told you I didn't want to come here. Look, look at the way that potato is. But everything else was great. And then you get in a relationship and expect somebody to just give in to whatever you want. That's a problem. I get moved when I see people in relationships. There you go, big boy. The lack of compromise closes your heart off. And when you have your heart closed off, how is a person supposed to get closer to you? Live for you. Not live for your significant other, user. Live for you and the idea of you and your significant other getting closer. You don't want to live for any human. You want to live for the idea of what you and that human can create together. Because we don't want to become... Re reliant on that person because if that person leaves or if that person becomes less than what they were before we could be broken in a very bad way so live for like for me live for faith and let you and your partner grow a bond that becomes something that you both can rely on but don't live for any particular person even a significant other live to be the best you and if they're doing the same, y'all are going to grow together where after a while you're not going to want to be apart from each other. You see it in, you see it in our, 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 elder, our, um, our elders. Our elders have gotten to a point where they don't want to be with anybody else. It's also why you notice that when our elders lose their partner, many of them lose the will to want to still be here. Because they can't see themselves without that partner. Thank you. You got to be careful that we don't make a person an idol. Very great, very great point, TC. That's why if you watch elders, you just saw it with the bushes. One bush left, and then the other bush left within days. They both as well. He was almost 100 or 100. When you've been with somebody for so many years, the idea of not having them sometimes is, is just overwhelming. When you get to those, those, those very high numbers of... 90 plus, 100. You've been together 55, 58, 60 years. It's hard to even fathom a world without that person. So I understand why a person just decides they want to check out. Yeah, and the Carters too. I'm sorry, that's the Carters I was actually thinking about. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Carters, I was just really, I'm saying I'm glad, I meant, I'm glad you cleared me up on that. It was the Carters I'm talking about that just recently passed. And it's super important, guys. And thank you for the hearts. We're almost at 30K. I told you we'd be there. And it's super important. So the lack of compromise, there's nothing wrong with compromising as long as it's done with an understanding of betterment of the relationship. Don't compromise because somebody said, do what I tell you to do. Don't do that. Don't just give in because somebody tells you to. There should always be a rhyme or reason to what is going on in a relationship. One part about being in love with somebody opens yourself up to hurt. Yes, that's part of it. That's part of it. You're always going to be vulnerable when you're in love. That's why you should be very cautious with who you choose to love. Oh, thank you. I, okay, I was, I was, I knew the bushes were in there too. Thank you so much, TC. I appreciate that. But Jen, we can't be scared. Yes, we reached 30K. I told you we would. Jen, we can't be scared even if we loved and have lost. We just have to reevaluate, heal first, and then reevaluate how we're going to go forward. But no. That once you've experienced it, you know what it feels like and you want that back. But not at subjecting yourself. Yes, uh, my YouTube channel link is in my bio. These videos would be back over there. This will be over there sometime this weekend um, with the snow, so I'll have time. But yeah, all my replays over there. And if you want to watch all my previous shows, please do. Please share them. So I'm going to go back over the list, guys. I'm just going to read them off if you've missed any. And I will gladly answer all your questions. I am still here for a couple of minutes. Like I said, I got time today. 
It's snowy. I just got one counseling session today, and I got time. So I'm going to read off the 10, and then I'll gladly answer any questions. But before, where did I find my wife? God brought her to me. I met my wife in 95, out here cheating. She said, I don't date married men. Okay, cool. I told one of the guys on the basketball team, that's my little diamond in the rough. We're going to get together someday. Five years later, um, we went on, like, we went to the movies back in 95. Five years later in 2000, I was just coming from the track, and I seen her get off the bus. And as soon as we started talking, she said, wait a minute, before we go any further, you still married? I said, no, I'm separated. I'm back home with my parents. I lived right around the corner from where she lived at. And I was joking with her, and I said, I'm going to give you my number because I know you're going to play the game. I don't even want your number because I know you're going to play the game. You're going to wait four or five days to decide if you want to call me or not, but here's my number. When I got in the house that evening, she said, first of all, don't tell me who I am. You don't know who I am, and if I want to call you tonight, I'll call you tonight. So she texted me, and we've been together ever since. And my divorce was official in 2003. And over the first five years... I had to learn how to be monogamous. So she caught me cheating three times. And the third time, she put it down. She's like, either it's me and God or the whores in the street, but it can't be both. You have to make a decision. And that was the final boundary. That was the day that I realized that. And I remember when I was leaving, small voice inside me said, you leave, you're never going to find somebody like her. And when I came back, I sat down next to her on the bed and I said, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And she said, no woman has ever said this to me. You need to let me in here so I know what's going on. I said, you don't want inside my head. I'm crazy. She said, no, I do. Because then how am I supposed to protect you even from yourself? And at that moment, I realized this is different. But I can't keep forcing a good woman to a bad place. I got to change me. And so that's what I did. I had to commit to becoming somebody different. Hey, Lord, and in becoming somebody different, God took care of the rest. So to your question of how did I find my way, God led me to her. But here's what happened. God led me to her because she held my crown until I was ready to put it back on my head. That's what a good woman does. She didn't get into my BS. She didn't get into my foolishness. And she didn't let my foolishness crush her. She knew what she was. She just held her position and was like, if he wants to get here with me, he's got to figure it out for himself. So when you write a book from Jiggle to Jesus, and I'm going to read to you guys the forward. So when people go, your wife knew about all that nastiness and the babies and all of that? Yes, I will read you the forward from my book that my wife wrote as soon as I go through this list. So I appreciate it. So to answer your question, be the best you and the Lord will bring you what you need when it's time. All right, so let's do this real quick. Let's go back over. So today we were talking about the 10 ways personal expectations can turn a relationship or relationships toxic. Number one was unrealistic demands. Number two was lack of flexibility. Number three was over-dependence on the partner. Number four, not recognizing individuality. Number five, constant criticism and comparison. Number six, neglecting self-responsibility. Number seven, ignoring boundaries. Number eight, manipulative behaviors. Number nine, unrealistic expectations of perfection. Number 10, lack of compromise and collaboration. So, one of the things, I'm going to give you two things before I go, and I will gladly answer all your questions. And again, big boy, I appreciate you asking me about my wife. Let me read you something. Now, my book, From Jiggle to Jesus, as you see, that is my lovely wife right there. That is me. Wrote this in 2010. And when people say, does your wife know about all the foolishness? I said, of course she does. I said, she's the one that actually told me to write the book. Because my poetry book, I had put some stuff out there. But she was the one that said, you need to let the world know how you changed your life. I said, I'm not sure if they need to hear all that. And she's also the one that changed all the names of the women in the book because she said, baby, you don't want to put women's names out there because they may not have changed their lives or if they have changed their lives, they may not want the men that they're dealing with to know what they used to be. Be fair, change their name. So we did. We went through the book and changed all the names so nobody would be outed and treated with disrespect because they had been with me. So when I tell you 
when you find a person that connects with you, everything flows the way it's supposed to, but it requires work. But let me read this forward to you. And again, this is from my book, From Gigolo to Jesus, and my wife wrote the forward. <clears throat> I can recall KL, or Big Dog as I affectionately call him, coming home and telling me that one of his friends was not happy with the new KL. The friend reminisced about all the fun they had and how much time they spent together running amok. You guys tap the screen as I'm reading, by the way. He told him that he wished that he had the old KL back. I listened to Big Dog's saddened tone as he spoke about his friend of many years. And when he had finished, I asked him how he felt about the new KL. He responded, I'm happy and unfortunate. He just doesn't get it. That evening when I went to bed, I prayed for my husband, as I do every night. However, I cried as I prayed. I cried because I knew that Big Dog's friend meant well, but he couldn't fathom what he was asking for. For five years, I had a front row seat to the self-destructive path that Big Dog called his life. In the public eye, he was the big man on campus, the life of the party, the one everybody thought had it all together, but in private, he was falling apart. I am in constant gratitude to our, heavenly, to our Holy Father that he has delivered Big Dog from that place every day. Every day added to his transition is like a day of sobriety together We to, that we celebrate together. Tiffany Braxton Belvin, wife of a former gigolo. As you see, she did not make it about her. Her strength is that she understood this is about Big Dog, me, and God, and the chicks out in the street. She knew who she was. And she wasn't compromising herself but she was going to leave the light on and the door open for me to figure it out. And I had to heal or decide I was going to heal me if I was going to be her partner. You have to understand your partner betters you. Your partner can help you heal. You have to make the decision to heal. And then watch the magic that God will work. But you have to decide that it is time for you to be different. 41 years of magic and you still continue and still continue to add. Yes, let's go. I'm at 24 years together, 17, let's see, 2007. Yeah, 17 years married. But we've been together since 24 years. Yes, the book is online. But go to my website because Jeff Bezos already makes a trillion dollars. And a little tip. Not that I'm saying stop buying from Amazon. Every author who has their book on Amazon loses 55%. Amazon takes 55% off the top. I have two different websites. The links are in my bio. Get it from me directly. And I can sign it if you get it from me directly. But yes, all my books are on both of my websites. But yes, most people don't know that. I own a publishing company as well. I've published all of my books as well as I've been invited to be a part of other books as well. But yes, J Jeff Bezos takes 55% off top. I'm trying to sign up for your Zoom. It won't let me. Send me, um, actually, I got to check that link. I'll see what's going on. Send me an inbox and I'll send you a link to the Discovery. Um, what's that? I'll check that link to make sure to see what's going on. And no, not the Zoom link. Did it um, have you, um, did you fill out the Discovery? Um, did you fill out the Discovery, uh, the Discovery form, big boy? Because if you did, I'll get the email and I'm going to send you an email that will have a, a discovery link in it. But I'll check it out if it did. But I'll take care of that. But yeah, the book, just go to my website and I can sign the books for you. It won't let me in. Okay, send me an inbox message and I'll make sure I send it to you directly. Trying to restart my life, too many distractions. I got you, David. This is what I'm here for. And this is why I don't close the door to brothers who need help either. Because by showing and being an example of what I'm supposed to be, and this again, somebody here on TikTok asked me about writing a book. So I wrote the book. Where's the form? It's in my um it's in my um link in my bio, but somebody just telling me that something might be wrong with the link. I'm gonna go check it out. But in my bio, the link tree link, click on where it says discovery session. If you filled out the discovery session, don't worry. It'll send me notification that you filled it out. I'm gonna send you an email. That will have a direct link for you to click on. So the form is in my um is in my what's the name? I got you. Yeah, but see, you know what it is, Jen? Amazon figures you need them for exposure of your book. My books are everywhere. My books are anywhere that you can order books from, but they all take money off the top. But when you're a self-published author, you're doing it all yourself. You can't afford 
Um, thank you so much. I appreciate that, user. And it's also why I mentor young men and women to try to prevent them from going that pathway that I went. Um, once I got things straight with me, two years later, I was able to fix things with my father. And I needed my father more at 39 than I did at 19. 19, I wouldn't have heard him. We would have fought every day at 19. But from 39 until today, my father and I have been able to repair our relationship. And I needed him more for guidance as a grown man than I did as a younger man. And I talk about that as well. And I try to give back because, again, I know I was very destructive. So the only way I can try to heal others is simply by trying to be more of what I'm supposed to be. I want to read something to you, and then again, I'll answer any questions that you have. And this one is from my very first book, A Man in Transition. This is poetry, but I wrote this. But let me ask you this question. Okay, chat, rock out with me. Does perfection exist? Put it in the chat, yes or no. Does perfection exist? Put it in the chat, yes or no. Put it in the chat. Does it exist? Tina says no. Wide Eye says no. Mr. Keith, I'll be 49 next month. I need to point out right. I got you. I'm here for it. Foxy said yes. But Foxy, you've been here before. Quiet. Shh. Bunch of no. Jamie says no. Big Boy says no. PJ says no. Divine Fire says no. So perfection doesn't exist. That's, that's, that's what you're standing on? Okay. I no. Pa says no. I'm going to show you that you're all wrong. Rock out with me. Let me turn this down a second. Here we go. I ask myself, why am I so lucky? Is there a reason I'm so blessed? But you're never supposed to question God's work. I say God because how do you explain her patience with me? There is something about the way she understands my needs. Are there other women who would love another's children like her own? Would another woman be strong enough to trust God and take back, take you back when you have tasted someone else's fruits? Her soul is pure enough to douse the evil that once filled my own. My vanity, pride, and smugness have been replaced with concern, endearment, and gratefulness. I now concern myself with more than just my own needs. Her smile fills my heart with joy. Her tears burn at my soul and demand my immediate attention and screams for forgiveness. I am blessed with an equal. So again, I ask you, why am I so lucky? Does God see something in me I don't see? He must. She is sexy beyond belief, even when she sleeps. Can that comfortable look come from what I have brought to her life? The world is funny. One minute you're all alone, next thing all your dreams are being answered. Thank you, Lord. Well, the only course of action is to leave all my worries, fears, and concerns at God's feet. Something about having the right woman makes each day, night, and morning special. I really do have the perfect woman, if only in my mind. And the title is Perfect Woman. Perfection can exist if it's only in your mind. But what did we be what were we taught? That if we can perceive it, we can be granted it, we can create it. Yes, God is perfection. But if I can believe that she's perfect for me, then perfection does exist, at least in my life. So, you can take it, you can believe it, or not believe it. That is from page 26 in my book, Man in Transition. Perfection can exist if inside your mind, what is for you is perfection. Because once you see that, you move differently. You fight harder. And then you start to see the very person, the very thing that you said. God is perfection. But if God started the book of Genesis off with putting a couple together, then there must be a reason why in the very first couple of pages, he thought, he said, man shouldn't be alone. And he understood the power of a good woman. So, of course, that was a piece that I wrote dedicated to my wife. And I show you that, guys, is because I am only as good as my connection to my wife. I'm only as good as what God has blessed us with, and that's covering. Got you, Tina. Hey, before Tina goes, guys, real quick, everybody in here find Purple Hearts to give to Tina to tell her thank you because she stepped in as a moderator for me. I love what she does. Let's give Tina some Purple Hearts before she go to tell her thank you for the work that she does behind the scenes to help me look good at what I do. That's a whole sermon, and I have preached it too. I have been on stage and preached that same sermon, Posh. 
There you go. Come on, let's give Tina some purple hearts to tell her thank you. Thank the people who help you. Thank them while you have them. Let them hear and see and feel your appreciation. Thank you, Tina. I say it publicly. Thank you for stepping in when I needed a moderator. I appreciate you. And you have a wonderful weekend and be safe. And when you need me, I'm here. And while you guys, I am here. If you have any questions, I got a couple more minutes. I'm going to hang out for a little bit for a while. I'll answer any questions. God made man first, but he always makes a rough drive before the final masterpiece of woman. Woo, I don't know, David. I'm like, okay, I have to rock with that one. I don't think it was the final masterpiece. I think he understood. I'll give you one. Okay, let me, let me give you this one here. There's no perfect person, but he unifies people. I never said there was a perfect person. Perfect perception. There are no perfect people, but your perception, but my perception can give way to creation. Because what do they say? If you can perceive it, you can achieve it. So if you see something as perfect in your mind, you can actually start to create the very thing that you say that's in your mind can actually become a thing. But I'm going to give you something here, especially my church folks, right? God created man, we know. God created woman, right? Okay. God said if two or more people are together and we're connected to him, he's present. Do y'all agree? Where are my church folks at? Rock with me for a second. Put I agree in the chat. When God said if two or more are present, he's present. Put I agree in the chat. David says yes. And if you're not of the church vernacular, that's cool. Hang out. I got you. All y'all agree, right? Now let me show you how smooth God was. This is why I read my Bible. God knew that if two or more together, he's present. So when he created man, he gave man a partner. And in this way, he would always be there with them. So he knew at the beginning to position himself there for us as he created us. Now replay that in your head of what comes from a solid union. It was already, the designation was already, the mold was already shown to us. Most people don't see it because they don't put the two together. If I say I'm going to be with you when two or more together, and then I show you from the beginning of the book that two of you need to be together, then I'm letting you know I'll be there for you. But we missed that. And if you don't know, I am actually a real Ephesians 4 teacher. I am also a Christian counselor as well. I work with a couple of churches and I build mental health ministries. I help churches to pay for mental health services for their parishioners. I have a church here I work with in Delaware. I have a church in Maryland. And I have a church that calls me every now and then in Alabama as well. Actually, they haven't called me in a while. Something, some tabernacle faith or something like that. If you can see it, then one can inhabit what they, if you can see it, then one can't inhabit what they envision. If you can see it, then one can't inhabit what they envision. Why not, TC? If I can envision it, why can't, if I can, if I can, are you saying if you can't see it? Are you saying if you can't see it? Because if I can see it, can I? Okay, can, that's what I thought. That's why I read it a couple of times. I just accidentally came across your page. Glad I did. No accidents in the world. My grandmother used to tell me that. There's no accidents in the world. God knows what he's doing. I didn't realize that my grandmother drove me crazy with her, with her uh, Bible talk. Literally was pouring into me in ways that I didn't. I didn't know the seeds that she was planting. There. I had no idea what was going to open up until I was like she said. Even boy, you can't get away from this. Even if you're going to preach at my funeral, and sure enough, I was four feet from her casket. That's the purpose of visualization. What you want? Yes. And the Lord says, speak it into existence. I got you, big boy, and I'll check it when I get off. Today was a divine meeting. I appreciate all of you. Listen, believe it or not, y'all are helping me. When I tell you last week I was done and I was ready to just give all this up, I'm tired. And, I'm, and I ain't going to lie, I still was like, I am so done with social media. But every time I come back and I have interactions with all of you, it gives me more patience. Because I ain't going to lie, sometimes I get frustrated with... Like, <laughs> thank you, TC. I really, I really feel that way. I cannot lie to you. That I sit here sometimes and I go... Like, I'll give you an example. Like, I understand why Jeremiah was the weeping prophet, right? He walked around Israel saying, come on, guys, y'all got to change. Y'all don't understand. And for like 80 years, I think Jeremiah was a prophet. Nobody was trying to hear what he had to say, right? 
I understand that. I, I understand why they called him the weeping prophet. I get it now. And that's some things that as I get older, it's not about church. It's about my relationship with the faith and how I use that relationship to help me help others. Your greatest friend. <laughs> Thank you. Your work is not in vain. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I do get frustrated because, like, I get it. And let me tell you something. Again, if you pay attention to scripture, once Jeremiah was done. Now, remember, Elijah came, then Jeremiah came. Well, when God showed up, it was only five books. Five short books. And then we went into bondage. God said, oh, you don't want to listen to the prophets? Okay, here, hold my, hold my wine. I got something for y'all. And the next thing you know, we in bondage. And I think that's what happens. God will send you who you need to talk to. But then at some point when you don't want to deal with all that, okay. You, you, you don't want to listen to the brother? You don't want to listen to the sister? Okay. I'm glad it snowed so I could be here. Oh, I appreciate that. He will hunt you down. No leave. <laughs> I appreciate that. That made my day. Because people can disappoint you. Yes, they can, wide eye. And I appreciate that, David. That made my day go hunt me down. I got you. No, y'all help me today. Um, every time I interact with you, and I knew I had time today because of the snow. Um, I enjoy these conversations, and I don't get to have them often because of all the foolishness. And I keep my distance from drama, so I don't just jump in and decide to rub my mouth. The father had 99 sheep, but one went, yes. And, they, and the angels celebrated when that one came back, TC. And we have to understand that. And I pray for a patience. Well, let me, let me let you know my prayers. I pray for clarity and I pray for patience. I ask the Lord, grant me the clarity to see and understand what it is that you want me to see. Then grant me the patience to be able to figure it out. Because I believe if I'm patient enough, I'll figure things out. I'm smart enough. That's why I struggle sometimes and I get frustrated that like, oh, and, and I can't save everybody. And I gave that up a long time ago when I was teaching. I know that I can't. But what's frustrating is when you see people being rewarded for foolishness. That's what bothers me. When I see people being rewarded for stuff, and I'm like, I'm here writing books trying to help folks, but I realize in its time. And I have to ground myself because in reading Job, what did Job say? I'm seeing people out here being rewarded, and they just out here committing sin. I ain't do nothing, and I'm messed up. I get it. The stories hold weight, guys. We need more. <laughs> there are brothers like me out here, big boy. They're out here. We just have to build more connections. That's what I do, is I try to connect a lot of people. And it's funny that you say that, big boy. Here's, here's one of the things I live by, right? And y'all can save this. You have to be bold enough to set the table for other people to eat and trust that they'll turn to you and say, Keith, you're not going to eat with us? Most people can't do that. They'll eat first. Or even hide some food and then serve. I live by, can I serve other people and be comfortable enough that they're going to look at me and go, you're not going to eat with us? And if you can get there, you're in a good place. Because now you know that you're making good choices. Are, is everybody going to turn to you and ask you to eat? Nope. Some people going to eat everything you put on the table. But for the most part, somebody's going to say, wait a minute, the guy who made the food is not eating? Nah, bro, come on and sit down. And they will then turn around and serve you. Our gifts were not for us. Our talents were not for us. They were to help other people. When you embrace that, when I embrace that, my life changed. I use my talents to serve, to help other people. I just have to be patient. <laughs> I'm like a kid waiting for like the, 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 the UPS truck. Was that the truck? No. That wasn't the truck? It's like Christmas. Thank you, God. You're, thank you so much. Yeah, I try to be transparent. The sun shines on just... The Justin, yes, that is so true, David. On point with that one. You are a blessed man. Look at the beautiful gift the father gave. Yes, and blessed me with a daughter. When we had lost a child, my wife had a miscarriage four years before my daughter was born, and we didn't realize we was going to have another child. And the fact that I had six other children, my wife was doing everything she could to hold it down. But it was like, no, I don't have a podcast. Um, I've been on, I've been on internet radio three different times. Again, it was participation. When I did create it, they didn't come. So I stopped. See, I get I, I don't like to waste time. And like if people don't want to hear me, then I don't bother. You know, it's I I was on a podcast with somebody else, numbers were fairly decent, and then all of a sudden it's like they just disappeared. And it's like, 
How much tap dancing do we have to do? And I think there's a plethora. There's so much noise out there now that it's, it's overwhelming to people for people to try to find what they need. So I kind of just play my position and let them find me. To everything there is a season. And that's, and I'm so glad you said that, Divine Fire. I believe that. I just have to be consistent. So every time I get ready to try to leave, the Lord kind of get your butt back over there. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> every time I try... Ecclesiastes, okay, I got, yeah. I'm glad you said that. That's Okay, I was just thinking about that. I'm going to have to read that. But yeah, I've read, I've written these three. Uh, here's another one. I've written part two to this one. Lukewarm Saint, Inspirational Fiction. Actually, this is a pretty good one. I, don't, I won an award for this one, too. Been in Ebony Magazine. I've done some things. But at the end of the day, it's about what I've done today. What is for me is for me. Yes, I believe that. Thank you, Eunice. I believe that, too. I don't trip so much on what people get because here's the thing. I don't know if you sold your soul or not to get it. The prayer should be as a Yes. The thing that bothers me is I know people are going to be led. Where your movies at? <laughs> hey, listen. Um, I'm in a documentary where my voice can be heard. Um, it's The link is in my bio. I am one of the voices in the documentary, and I ain't gonna lie. When I la I'm like, okay, that's me. And we won a bunch of awards. Um, I'm an award-winning author, an award-winning poet, and I've been in an award-winning documentary. My mentor and one of my partners from Italy, he always reminds. He said, you know, you're too hard on yourself, bro. Do you know what you've done? And it's hard because I don't want to ever seem vain. I lived that life for a long time, and I think that's where I fight with sometimes that. Promotion is not vanity. And yes, I explain a lot of things that I have or I've done, but I try to make sure it never is done in a way where I am trying to, to sound vain. I don't want anybody thinking I'm better than them because I'm not. You know what? I my, my book from Jiggle to Jesus was contracted to be a play with a guy when I, when I was living in New York. We were supposed to do a play at Apollo Theater, but his production company fell through. So we had to dissolve the contract. We were supposed to turn it into a Tyler Perry type, um, a Tyler Perry type play. It never got off the ground. And somebody had asked me, um, they were supposed to transfer my book and write the script. Never happened. Um, you know, maybe that's something in the future. Thank you, Devon. I, I think it's simple because once you understand who you are, you're we're all just grains of sand on a gigantic beach. We just have to be comfortable with that. And when I travel, you know, I I don't walk around and I'm this, I'm that. I'm just me. Even with my mentor program, I the, the, the kids are 9 through 11, 12 years old. I just simply want them to, to, to feel, figure out who they are. Some of them will joke and say, hey, I looked on Google. Yo, you got a lot of pages. Maybe. I do. But if I can't help the people who come to me, then what good are all those accolades if I can't help or I'm not grounded enough to hear your pain. Because it's not about my pain when you come to me and say, I need help. So I stay grounded and I stay on the different apps to, to listen and to watch and see what's popular and to see what's causing whatever. Yeah, um, it's uh, Keith K.L. Belvin. My name is the same on all social media sites. Keith K.L. Belvin. It's my government. If folks want to come looking for me, they ain't going to like that. <laughs> I'm still a New Yorker at heart. Yeah, I don't. I use my government name. I ain't got nothing to hide. Keith K.L. Belvin, big boy. The link is in my bio as well. All my professional links are there too. Just look for YouTube and click on the link. And again, if anybody's having problems with the discovery um, call link, uh, I mean, to set up a discovery call with me, just send me an inbox. I will get your inbox and I'll make sure that I get the link to you. The discovery should be working, but if it's not, listen, with all these changes that they make on these different apps, I wouldn't be shocked, but I'll definitely check on it um, today to make sure. I got time this weekend because everything is shut down, so... Anybody got any questions while I'm here? I'm here for you. If you got a question, let me know. TC, that's called faith. Yes, it is. The belief in things not seen. And trust me, God has gotten me through many a nights where I'm like, whoo, there's no way I would have gotten home without him. <laughs> that's another thing, too. You have to be real about what God has brought you through if you want people to believe you. 
And that's one of the reasons why I even wrote the book From Jiggler to Jesus. I got two other books that I'm supposed to release um, this coming year. They're completed. I just have to uh, tighten some things up. But I do get frustrated. Hello, Teresa. I do get frustrated because you put the work in and you realize that people aren't reading as much. And if you're not, if you're somebody famous, then they just buy it just to buy it. Um, and it's funny because I've sat in a room with NBA players. I've sat in a room with other folks. And it's funny that many of them want what um, I have. And it's okay. And many of y'all know Mary B. Morrison. If you check out Mary B. Morrison's book, Who's Loving You? Now, she's a, a, a New York Times bestselling erotic story writer, right? If you check out her book, Who's Loving You? In the back, there's a story that I've written. It's not erotic. It's about my wife and I. And when I asked her why she wanted me to be a part of her book when she sells erotica, and I'm talking about my wife, she said, I sell fantasy. What you and your wife have is real, and my readers need to read that. And that's how I got my first professional break. I was on an internet radio show, and Mary B. Morrison heard me and said, I want you to be in my book. So that's another reason why I just, I talk, and wherever God takes my voice, he takes it. Do you think it's possible to have faith and trust in something that you cannot understand? Yes, because you know that it's bringing you some type of, 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 of comfort, but you're not sure why. What I would simply do in that particular case, Jen, is to search more of why you believe it. Why do you feel strongly about it? And God will show himself to you. Many of us believe in a higher power, believe that there is something that's God-like, but the more we search, the more, how can I find my purpose? Get the book, Cure for the Common. Uh, here we go. This one here, Divine Fire. Cure for the Common Life by Pastor Max Lucado. Great book in helping you find your purpose. But the scaled down version is live your life backwards. Start from today and think about your life in reverse and think of the things that you did easy without no question things you did without even thinking about it and you'll start to see your purpose now that doesn't mean that where you chose to be in your life was aligned with your purpose but one of the easiest ways to figure out your purpose is live your life backwards and figure out what were things that you just did that other people go how are you able to do that for me it was running my mouth but for years i ran my mouth for me the last 19 years, I've ran my mouth to serve God, and God has rewarded me for it. And my gifts made way for me to get what I wanted, except I had a mindset of selfishness. Once I changed that, then my gifts made a way for me to have the things that I wanted, or more importantly, the things that I needed. But here's a great book to help you with that, guys. Pastor Max Lucado's, and the audio book is great as well. I have both. Um, this is a great one. Um, simply because it's easy to follow and it really will give you uh, the information that you need um, to help you figure that out. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. There we go. And look for the one with the two dogs on the couch. 2000, I think it was 2004. I'm not sure. I think 06, 07. I read it, I've read it like six times now. But yeah, Cure for the Common Life. Great book. Any questions, guys? I'll gladly answer questions. Like I said, I'm here for a few more minutes. I'm, I'm good today. And again, if you like, keep tapping the screen. We can go to 40K if you like. Do you think I can find my forever even if I drive trucks? You can find your forever no matter what you're doing. The question is, is the forever where God wants you now? Your profession has nothing to do with it. If God wants, he'll assign you somebody who will ride with you. The question becomes, are you healed, big boy? And are you going to be able to receive God's gift if he was to grant you what you say you want? That's the question. It's not the profession. The jobs that we have, nothing to do with it. Now, if you out here stripping, you might, I don't know, you might have to put your clothes on, but your job as a truck driver will not stop you from finding a person who wants you to be a part of their life and vice versa. The question becomes, if you're ready, and you're healed, then your dating has to be on purpose. Your dating has to be with the idea of connecting with somebody where you learn about them, they learn about you, and you build something like that. Tired of being alone? I got you. But don't rush it either now, because you don't want to mess around and give away 
time messing with somebody who don't deserve or need to be with you because you're lonely. I mean, alone. Sometimes we turn around and it becomes loneliness and we don't want it to be. Let me just make sure I got everything. Thank you, Fox. I appreciate you. I'm glad I found you. Lost contact. So glad to be here. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Appreciate you. I'm glad you're here as well. I believe I'm ready. Okay. My late husband was a truck driver. The person you find has to be okay with your life. Very, talk to him, Sharita. That's the point too. And if it is the right person, they will actually have resources in terms of being able to, exp emotional resources to be able to say to you, your truck driving doesn't bother me. I just would need you to do this. How can you determine if you are healed? Great question, Aisha. Um, when the things that were troubling you before do not, and you have a working game plan to prevent you from going back to the things that hurt you before. How can I stop the feeling that my husband must how can I stop feeling that my husband must compare me to women with better bodies and beauty? Sit down and have a conversation and open up your heart and explain to him that when he does that, he's hurting you. Have him and give examples. So take your time before you have the conversation with him and write down examples of what he has done and then detail what your feelings are when he does those things and then ask him to please stop. Explain to him that when he compares you or does things of that nature, it hurts and this is why it hurts and then explain to him what that does to you after he does it. And if he cares about you, he should start to work on the things that's going on. Thank you so hard for the, the hearts, Nita. Because if he cares about you, the minute that you say he's hurting you, then he should want to stop. And then I would go from there. Do that first and then see what happens. Because sometimes we have to clearly explain, not just, hey, you're hurting me. You have to show what the person is doing. Thank you for the hearts, Nita. Show what the person is doing to hurt you and then give examples by saying, when you did this, it made me feel like this. And I wish you would stop doing that because it really causes me to feel like this. Have those honest and open conversations. Share your pain with the person that is supposed to love you greater than anybody else short of God. Your husband is supposed to be the person that, that protects your heart, not punch holes in it. So that's what I would do. And I hope that that helps first. How can I deal with a narcissist person in my life? Ooh, that's a tough one, Divine Fire. First, get them professional. Get them. I want to make sure I, I'm gender fluid. Get them professional help because dealing with the narcissism is, 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 is deep. But before that, how do you know he's a narcissist? Has he been clinically diagnosed as having narcissists? Um, a clinical diagnosis of narcissism? Or is it just he has behaviors of a narcissist? Because one of the things that he has to do is you both have to sit down and really look at the decisions and choices that he's making that is affecting the two of you and explain that this is narcissistic like narcissistic type behavior and what problem it's, it's, it's causing. And then he might need or they might need professional help to help them deal with it if they cannot do it on their own. Because narcissism is a tough one. Requires a lot of work. You are welcome, uh, Momoa. Behaviors of narc. Okay, so it can, and then it he can work on that. They can, I don't know. They can work on that. And they can change that. And you two support each other. But he has to first acknowledge that um, the problems are even there. He has, to, he has to acknowledge your positioning of what you see and what you feel. And then together, the two of you work on it. It's my pastor in denial. Then if your pastor is refusing to listen and refuses to take criticism or constructive observation, then you explain to him that, you know, even the great Peter had Paul show up to let him know he wasn't doing what he's supposed to do. And this is what I see. You can also show him that in the book of Job, it was a child that mentioned to Job what he saw in Job, what he was doing. And then God showed up to protect that child. So you can use scripture to get the, the pastor's uh, attention um, and explain to it that, you know, this is what I see. But then document it in terms of what you see, dates that you saw it, and then present it to him. And at that point, once you present it to him, just pray for him because it's now on him. Once you present honest truth to a pastor, if they don't want to accept it, then it's not on you. You pray for him and then let him back up from it. Because you can't force anyone into a position of acceptance, but you can offer from an open heart. 
and use scripture as well as use your own experiences and use dates and times. Facts always help when you're trying to present to somebody what they've done wrong. Definitely works in court too. <laughs> because they heard. Because <laughs> so that's what it is. Any other questions? I'm here for it. I got a couple more minutes. I'm going to go about another 10 minutes and then I got to get ready for my session at 3.30. Let's keep tapping the screen. Let's go to 40K today. And I just want to show y'all something too, right? This is how great y'all are. I see people do all this yapping and whatever on social media, right? I don't think we've gotten more. I think the most that we've had in the room at any one time was 44 consistently. We had a bunch at the beginning. But just the group of y'all, we have almost 40K likes, which means... Y'all tap that screen almost 40,000 times without even having with having less than 50 people. That is the power of just a focused group of people. And the Lord said, there's nothing that y'all we can't do when we put our heads together. And it's super important because they heard. Any other questions? I got you. Any other way that I can help? And again, I'll go check my inboxes for anything else. And again, I always tell folks, you can do a Google search for me. I'm always around. I've been on social media for a while. Both my websites, I have a, a publishing website, I have my counseling website. I do one-on-one -on -one counseling. I own a, a mentor program. I see kids twice a week. Actually, I got to put that video up too. Um, I bowl twice a, twice a week as well. I try to stay um, as active as possible. Um, you know, I, I do a lot. The thing that I don't do is vacation, and I got to change that. I've been on one vacation since like 2008. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't even lying to you. I've been on, I went on vacation last year for like two weeks. Uh, I was in Virginia, and then where did we go? I think it was Virginia, and then we went to PA. Um, but I haven't been on vacation since 2008. I went to, I went from, from 1998 to 2008. I traveled somewhere in and out of the country every year while I was teaching everything else. I have not, it's been, just trying to figure out work and my daughter and everything else. Once I had my daughter, that changed because we just not leaving her with anybody. So, no, I'm not a workaholic. I just don't travel because I'm always doing something or just reading. I do a lot of reading. I would like to be a workaholic, but I probably get more done. <laughs> I, I my ADD just allows me to take in a lot of information. I just don't travel. Because I do a lot of traveling for work, so a lot of times I'm just hanging out in hotels, relaxing, and I just, I got to be the most anti-social, social, social person on the planet. I love people, love being around people, but I love when I'm by myself. I love when I can just sit on a balcony and just dig the weather, dig the music, dig the noise, and even when I'm around people, I love to just sit and watch people and this is where the beauty of having ADD. I get to listen to multiple conversations at the same time so I can kind of hear what people are talking about when I'm at dinner. So, no, I'm not a workaholic. I would like to be. I'm very selective to who I let in my ear. You're supposed to be, um, Sharitha, especially in your positioning with your loss. Nobody's supposed to get close until they've jumped a couple of hurdles to get there. You've earned that position because you put your time in as a wife. And they got to show themselves approved to get closer to you to be um, whatever that is. So your ear is supposed to be selective. It should be. Thank you for all your information from situation, from a loss, and believing in the best yet. Thank you. I appreciate that. Amen. There's nothing like being alone. It really isn't. Um, I really do it. Like when I was in Jamaica, when my wife and I went to Jamaica for our honeymoon, we was in the midst of Hurricane Dean. Um, that was crazy. I've been in eight hurricanes. Um, I was Katrina. I was in the Bahamas. I was on the other side of Katrina. Edwards in Puerto Rico. Um, dealt with a hurricane in Cancun. Um, Sandy in New York. Another one in New York. Um, I've been around eight hurricanes. So thank the Lord that I've gotten to see category threes, fours, and fives. But Hurricane Dean, I was in Hurricane Dean in Jamaica. And Sandals Resort replaces your whole stay. So if you stay with them with a category three or better hurricane they give you back your whole stay so i was on the fifth night of an eight night stay so they gave us back the eight nights and that's when i went back in 2008 and i remember sitting up on the balcony just overlooking the water and i said lord if i don't come back to jamaica ever again thank you for allowing me to be here now i didn't know I, that was gonna be the case also in 2000 i was uh, the coach of the jamaican national team um so i was in kingston jamaica for three weeks 
coaching the national basketball team. And I know some people go, what are you talking about? Let me see if I can show you. It's over there. Oh, over this way. That plaque right there, that green one, is the one for um, the Jamaican basketball team. I just don't feel like dragging my camera all over my dirty office, but I got to clean my office up this weekend. But yeah, I was a part of the Jamaican national team in Jamaica for three weeks. We stayed in Kingston, stayed in um, Kingston 5 at the Sutton Place Hotel. And I just enjoyed just relaxing. I take in where I'm at. I don't need, I partied so much in New York. I don't need to party. But when I do, I party. Don't get me wrong. But I just enjoy sitting and relaxing because sometimes we got to be still and just realize that this world is so big and there's so many people and there's so many things that we could do. So, but I definitely am going on vacation next year. Some, even if I got to just take one credit card and be like, let's go. I'm a widow, married at 17, now 62. It's been hard, but you're wow. Thank you, Lady P. And that means so much for you to share that with me. And congratulations on such a stretch. Yo, blessings to you. And I'm sorry for your loss, but you're still young. 62 is young. And you know women outlive men, so you, listen, 62 is young. I'm 56. 62 is young. And now 62 then became the new 40, so I'm just saying. Nowadays, listen, they out there looking for the 62-year-old women now. And actually, the 62-year-old women is out there trying to be found. <laughs> well, at least on TikTok, I see. We got a lot of sisters over 55 on TikTok. That's like, I'm like, okay, go get them, girl. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I'm honored by that. And that's another thing, too, is that um, I don't take compliments. Just, no, I appreciate it. You could be anywhere else in the world. You could say anything to anybody. So to take a couple of minutes to offer me something, I appreciate it. I wish more people would do that. I, I see people just blow off things that people say. And I, I get frustrated, too, because I see people who let the number of followers they have make it okay to treat people with disrespect. And I say this to the young folks that I work with. There is never an acceptable time to just be rude for no reason. Yeah, there's some times that people will push you into feeling some type of way. But there's never an acceptable time just to be rude to be rude. Never. But sometimes on this app, I see some things that makes me wonder, like, you don't think that's going to come back home to you? Oh, thank you so much, Sharita. Yes, been trying to get back in, the, in, the, in this what lost my husband to COVID. Trying with her for four years. I got you. I lost my mom to COVID in, in 2000 as well. Sitting right here in this chair, unfortunately. I was on the phone. My sister called, and they were trying to revive her. She had a cardiac arrest. And the sad part, I was on live, and I forgot to turn the camera off. So the 32, 35 people that was on got to see me go through the, all of that. And it was still a blessing from that as well. When I went back to look at the video, I realized how calm I was with my sisters. And then my partner came on after them. I realized how calm I was. And that's when I realized, I said, okay, Lord, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be. I realized why I'm a crisis specialist. I realized why I'm the one that you picked to help people deal with crisis. Because it was almost an eerie calm sitting right here, knowing that I couldn't do anything and listening to my mom, them working on my mom. And, you know, I had to re come to the realization there's nothing I could do. And it's... It's easy if you allow it to cause you to feel some type of way. I took it as a positive. I was like, okay, Lord. If I had moved from New York with all the COVID that, ooh, with the COVID that was happening, because, you know, you say, you know, hey, they shut down a lot. With everything that was going on in New York, maybe I get it. So I always try to look for the positive. There's always, there is a positive to everything if you can find it. Now, holding on to it is different. But there's always a positive spin if you can find it. There's a blessing in everything if you can find it. Holding on to it is different. And thank you for the hearts. Come on, let's keep going. We're almost at 40K. Let's get to 40K. It's a 40K type of snow day. Let's tap the screen. We're at 38.8. Let's keep going. Let's get to 40K. It's a 48 type, 48K type of snow day. I haven't been on this long ever. It's almost 3 o'clock. Wow. I didn't even realize it was that late. 
But let's go. Let's get to let's get to forty k while we talking. But yeah, guys. Um, you know, and then the fact that I got my daughter and my wife home today. Um, you look around, you don't realize how blessed you are. And when I travel, I can never allow myself to feel I'm better than anybody else, no matter what country I'm in. And I learned about classism when I was in Jamaica, and I realized how people with money will treat people without it the same as they do here in the States. So color sometimes can go out the window when it comes to classism. But I learned a lot, and I've learned that as an educator, my job is to be a siphon of information. Snow day, New York, live in Virginia. Oh, yeah. Oh, VA. Yeah, I was in Virginia not this past November, the November before I came down for, um, and I go to Virginia. Yeah, I was in Virginia last year, too, because I go bowling in um, Mechanicsville near, um, where is that? That's not Hampton. Whatever, what part of Virginia is that? I know it's Mechanicsville is where the bowling alley is. So we stayed, I think, near Mechanicsville. I think it's near Richmond. So, yeah, we come there, and we're supposed to come there in March. So I'm supposed to come there for a weekend in March. Oh, yes. Okay. And so, yeah, there's two bowling alleys that they have there. So we come in and we're there for the weekend. I'm not sure because I normally come in on Thursday night and stay over until Sunday or Monday. But I'm not sure this year because I think I'm supposed to bowl on Sunday. But I go down. That's where you live. Okay, cool. Yeah, because we stayed at the Holiday Inn and the Hampton and they're right next to each other. And I think there's a Walmart there. And then on the other side where the bowling alley is, the Bolero, there's a ton of stores and everything else. There's almost like a whole little mall area. Um, and we come down every year. They have a, an event every year in March. So I think we're going down. Um, I think we're coming down this year. I'm not sure. A lot of times I do it just to get away. I, I bowl in the DMV areas too, so I go down to um, my, my father and my son live in um, Maryland. So I go down to Maryland often. To see them in the bowl and stuff like that. So, and that's another reason why I don't do so much vacation because when I go somewhere, I'll stay over a day or two just to relax, go swimming at the hotel or whatever, and then come on back home. I don't need much time off. But this coming year, because I'm older, yeah, I'm gonna start taking weeks or two at a time. My wife wants me to take a cruise. I have not yet. I ain't gonna lie. I've traveled all over. I have not cruised yet. She's trying to convince me to take a cruise. I'm not sure yet. Unless y'all y'all got any advice on a, a a newbie who's never cruised to make it more comfortable, just something about being out of all that water. <laughs> Thank you, Divine Fire. I'm actually going to get off in a few minutes, and I just I I, I just cooked uh I made some pork loin, so I just made some uh some what's the name um shredded pork from the pork loin. Let me know when, let me know when, please, if you don't mind, just shake your hand and say, oh, cool, that'd be nice. Well, seven-day cruise are very nice. That's what my wife says. And Teresa, that would be nice. I'm always, listen, I met um, Ellie, the moderator, when I was in uh, Charlotte this past August. She's from the next state over. She came over to visit. We sat down at the Chick-fil-A, and I got to meet her and her wonderful son and daughter. And we had a wonderful conversation, so we had a chance to meet each other. And it was a blessing to sit across from somebody and, and know that there's no BS. I wasn't trying to get with her. She wasn't trying to get with me. And me being in a hotel, it had nothing to do with it. We were sitting down having a meal, enjoying it. And her, her, her son and daughter was, was cool. And it was great to, to meet somebody off of social media. And there's no funny business or anything like that. And that just basically helped our friendship get even tougher. I know her job changing. So Tina stepped in as a moderator, but that's another thing too. Um, I live what I what I say. When I meet people in public, I am the same person that I am online. I, I'm the same person. There's this, so I don't want to misrepresent myself at all. I think it's your yeah. My wife, we're supposed to go next year. Um, um, simply, and uh, yeah, I I don't know. I hear all the great things about it, but I'm still like, eh, I wish you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I stayed at, uh, oh, we was, oh, where was that? I can't think, was it, was it the, was the Hilton? I think it was the Hilton. Um, we stayed at the Hilton, and I noticed a Chick-fil-A right across from the Hilton. And I was there for like three days. Because I was supposed to perform the wedding, but then it turns out that my online credentials are not received in Carolina so her father wound up doing the wedding. I'm actually glad because I really got to enjoy the wedding. I gave my speech, and then I came on back to the hotel to relax. 
I had another friend that I wanted to go see in the southern end of North Carolina, but she was two, she was four, four hours away, something like three hours away. So I got to come back down. I grew up with her and I know she's having some health issues. Yes, that's what's up because you could choose to be anywhere else. Got you. I love cruising too. You don't even realize. You know what's funny? My wife said the same thing, but she loved the ports of call. I, I just would have to get, uh, I got to get some cortisone injections in my knees for all the walking that y'all do on a cruise. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about trying it out next year. I'm still not fully convinced as the whole idea of being out on that water, but I'm, I'm always up. I'm up to try something. I would have went this year, but I had to. I had a bowling tournament, and then I just wasn't sure. So I told my wife, you go, let me know, because you know what I like and don't like, and I'll trust you. And she came back, and, and she was, well, she, we, we were in conversation on regular. She's like, oh, you would have loved this, you would have loved that, so next year we're going to do it. I was like, cool, because I'd rather have my wife go and tell me, because at least I know, I trust what she sees. She was like, you wouldn't have liked that, you wouldn't have. I was like, okay. So basically it was like eight to two of things that I would have liked to things that I wouldn't have. Hey, we got the 41K. How about that? Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, again, let me get ready to shut things down unless anybody has any other questions. All my books, you can rent the buggy. Hey, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. That's, that's, that's more ego. I refuse to get. I, I hate when I see those things jetting around the supermarket. I'm good. Like right now, I got KT tape on my knees. I'm good. Is if I'm just going to be, like, if I got a bowl for three days, I'll get cortisone injections. I'm good. I won't feel no pain. If I got to be on a cruise for seven days, I'm going to get a couple injections in the knees. I'm good. I'm not riding. To me, a buggy is submission. <laughs> I'm not submitting to these bad knees. I refuse. I'm still a sexy big man in my mind. I refuse to jump on the buggy. No. <laughs> I'm not giving in. I can walk. <laughs> I don't even need a cane. Not yet. But if I get one, it's going to be one of them smooth, I'm about 85 canes. One of those 1970 canes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get one of them smooth. Yeah, walk. that's it. One of those smooth canes. Are you not sure if it's my need? I'm post. You know what? I have to. Um, that's on the table. My, um. My my knee guy, we talked about knee replacement because after the years of playing football and the years of playing basketball, it's, uh yeah, that's right, with the 70 limps, so you understand. But uh, we talked about knee replacement because right now it's bone on bone. He said, you know, it's about dealing with the pain. It's not going to get any worse, but it's not going to get any better. So I honestly can deal with the pain. It's just the idea of the surgeries. I'm not a big, I had multiple surgeries on my knees from playing ball. And um, between the torn meniscus and other tests, it's it's like, eh. so one of my doctors, we talked about surgeries if it's necessary, whatever, so I'm thinking about it, but it's definitely on the table for replacement knee surgery, but I got some more work, I got, I'm down about 40, yeah, 45 pounds, I still got a ways to go, when I get a little smaller, um, I'll think and consider knee replacement, because then I feel the recovery will be easier, so right now, I'm just doing the things I gotta do, I just, uh, I just, in my slow cooker, I just made like a pork loin that I um, cooked for like 10 hours and it's fantastic. And then I shredded it up to make a, a form of pulled pork, but it's very lean. And that's another thing too, is that, you know, I, I mess around, I cook myself because that's another thing too. I do the things I need to do. Plus I have a degree in physical education, so it's not like I don't know. It's just a matter of applying it. So I'm working on it. The knees is what it is, but I still bowl and I still have fun. I still do my thing. It's just that sometimes steps, what seasonings? Oh, great question. I went with uh, garlic powder, onion powder. Uh, I have a Sazon mix. Um, hot pepper, brown sugar. Uh, what was the other one? What was the other one? Let's see. Cumin. Bum, 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 bum. Some Stella Rosso black. Um, and chicken uh, stock. I use chicken stock, put the rub on. The wine is average 275. Let's go. That's the NY. And then um, let it sit for 10 hours. It 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 
cook very well. And with pulled pork, since it's very lean, you got to add that seasoning. So once the wine and the, and the um, what's name mix in, it sits great. So once, and I just made like a chuck steak the other day in the, in the slow cooker. That one I made with um, some Tony's, some, uh, what's the other season? I got a bunch. I, I, I got so many seasons. My wife told me stop buying it because I buy so many different seasons because I do a lot of cooking. Um, I made some um, Jamaican Rasta pasta with uh, shrimp and crab meat the other day. I think I put a picture up on the what's name. So I made that because she was fasting for 10 days. So I wanted to make something for her as she broke up fast. But, um, yeah, I cook all the time. Um, because why am I going to spend 20 30 40 50 60 $80 when I can spend $25 and make meals that will last two, three days and have fun doing it? I have a whole folder that has a bunch of recipes in it. Hell, I think I have some recipes here. So I make a little bit of everything. I even make homemade beef patties as well with um, with curry, with um, with browning, with scotch bonnets. I Yeah, I have fun with it. <laughs> Can I have my liver? <laughs> but yeah, and my wife jokes about it because my wife don't cook like that. So she loves the fact that I cook. And that's nothing too men. Like, oh, a woman's supposed to cook. Man, please. I see something I like. I, I order from Instacart, I download a recipe, and I, I figure it out and have some fun with it. And then, you know, uh, with the pasta, I had heavy cream. Um, I have my aromatics, which is my, my garlic, my onion. Um, I look at what I can replace certain things with. So I use red, yellow, and orange peppers instead of the green. Um, I normally make it with chicken, but I felt like using shrimp. Um, yeah, I have fun with it. The thing that I'm going to be working on soon is homemade lobster bisque. Um, that's the next challenge that I have. I want to make homemade lobster biscuits. I really do like lobster bisque, but I'm learning that too many places. <laughs> thank you so much. I know a lot of people don't use real lobster. So I'm going to get like four lobster tails and I'm going to make some homemade lobster bisque and half of it. I'm going to freeze and the other half I'm, we and the family going to enjoy. But, um, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. And the same thing over on Facebook. How often on TikTok? Only on Fridays. I can't deal with the noise and anything else. I'll pop in on different people's lives and offer something, but my time is Friday. Every Friday, 11.30. And then I, when I'm done, I put it over on YouTube. All right, well, it's after 3. I have to get ready to go because I got a counseling session at 3.30. So, guys, let me just say to you, I have a webinar coming up on February 18th. It's $24.99. If you want to come and rock out with me for an hour and a half as we take a deeper dive into toxic relationships. Again, if you want to get my book, the link is in the bio, 12 Steps to Recovering from a Toxic Relationship. You heard me read from my two books here, which are also on my website, A Man in Transition by KL. That is me right there. And then, of course, you heard me read from, from Jiggle to Jesus. And again, that is me right there as well. And I did not get a chance to read from this one, Lukewarm Saint. Story about a Brooklyn educator torn between his love for women and doing the right things. And his mother and grandmother keep trying to explain to him that it was women that destroyed him and destroyed his father and his grandfather. But his friends are trying to, one is saying join the church, the other one is saying, man, bed down as many women as you can. So, yeah, and I got two more books that's due out this coming year. And I've been a part of like nine other anthologies and a documentary. So I do a lot and you can find me. But I appreciate you. And again, I'm glad that the tips could help. I have my sheet. I really put the work in. And I saved those because all of those those 10 steps are going to be ebooks that I'm going to put on my website. So you'll be able to download them and get them for like $2, $3, something like that. Because I want people to be able to find the information. Also, when I put it up on YouTube, the list will be on the YouTube page. So you'll be able to go through the list with the the comments next to it on each of my page, on each of the videos as well. Like, share, subscribe, let other people know who I am, share the information with them. And if they need professional help, reach out. Last thing, you're my new publisher. Will be <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Last thing, if your church does not have a mental health ministry, because I get churches to pay part of my fees for people who are struggling financially. If your church does not have a mental health ministry, reach out to me, give me your pastor's name and number, and I will reach out and see how we can start something up 
to be able to offer services to people at your church to get them the help that they need in these troubling times. I do that as well. I have a whole presentation and I have a brochure that I can send your pastor so it's not just a, a blind solicitation. It's me actually sharing what I do. As well as if you check my Braving Consultants website, you will see the reviews of organizations, churches, and other people that I've worked with. I, my receipts are there. So, again, I want you to have a wonderful weekend. If you're snowed in, be careful. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you, and I will see you next Friday, God willing. Be safe. If you need me, reach out. Take care. God bless, guys. Thank you as well.